versus five, make that three. Hey, what's <clears throat> up? So, name's Rick. I'm a coach. That's basically all I have to say about that. So, <clears throat> today, League of Legends Professional VOD Review. Professional game of choice being KT versus SKT. Going to be a pretty, pretty good series. For anyone that's already seen it and might have spoiled it a little, that's totally okay. But the truth is, we already know who won. And we heard it was a pretty good show, so I think it's definitely worthwhile looking into this game because it's pretty cool. KT had such a good roaster last year. Hey, look, that was a cheeky pun. I like that. But through they threw too much. Yeah, look, last year KT definitely had their ch their chances, but today this this is where it starts coming good. Today they're going to change it up again. And they're going to make the good shit happen. That's what's up. So. Your boy got a fuckload of P to let's go rec nine. I gotta figure out a rec nine high beam mode, eh? Just just because Stone needs it. Apparently, Stone really fucking needs it. <laughs> so yeah, grab your friends. If you're interested in seeing, oh, that's that's just harsh, regretful. <laughs> but yeah, grab your friends. Come have a come have an enjoyment of the of this stream. I'm still getting mayhem working because as, if you might have accidentally heard the weird sounds that went off during a moment ago. <laughs> I'm still having a few issues with getting mayhem sorted. Surprise, surprise. Uh, how are we doing? We feeling good? How many people we got in the chat today? Got some regulars? Some new people? Hmm. Well then, so give me a hot second. Just enjoying some old fashioned 20 minute queue timers. Oof, that's the good shit right there. I think I got it working in good nick. Pizza! <laughs> I'm about to steal Stone's pizza. That's what's up. Alright? Who's ready for that? I'm gonna go and steal... I'm gonna go and steal his pizza. Can't let him... Can't let him have any more of it without me stealing it. That's the plan. That is the plan. Alright. Shall we? I think this is... Hang on. Gotta make sure I got the timer right on this. And review. Now I had to move myself into the bottom right corner for this, didn't I? Let's go here. Oh no, wait. Draft as well. <clears throat> fabulous, fabulous stop time there on uh, old mate Papa Smithy. Now, have I lost my sound? Hello? Yeah. Even between there KT and SKT, but it will be kind of a watershed moment for both squads.
I'm about to deposit some money in my account and feed you. That's the good shit. I had the timer on the Twitch VOD, but unfortunately it won't actually translate the timer into mayhem. It's actually like really pissing me off. This looks like we're getting close. Get him to the Greek three Rex stream. <laughs> still had their struggles in the late game I mean that you know next stream getting big t1 if you look over the map got their, their previous game stats here so for those who aren't aware you know the kt versus skt thing is pretty huge telecom war spanning many seasons it's never been like never been good for the side of kt they've just never managed to get a good win out of it skt how did I end up not even remotely close to getting this done? Come on. But here we go. Draft. Now we're fucking talking. We're starting to thin out, Atlas. Yeah. I mean, then we're going to get Zaya bans. We're going to get the Tristana. And Caitlyn, of course, banned. Braum sticking out like a sore thumb, but Tom Kench is going to be there if Marta does want to try and answer some of the melee support that has been going on. I want to see Marta on the Alistair. After seeing what Wraith was capable of... Sam's, uh, that's a Samsung team. white call, I see. Regretful. Well. It's got to be that. I feel like Marta's guaranteed positioning. You start getting kited out. And, well, we saw the Khan Jace smear, okay. but most likely going to be on Jace. Pawn has been in Tristana. Makes a lot of sense. And no one's really prioritizing okay, Zaya. So. A little bit surprising, given that other teams have the chase against nar was how Khan drafting is its own beast so i'm going to leave it for the time being i'm just going to try to speed through it so we can get the game played on because i think people are more interested in that than they are interested in drafting unless i'm proved wrong and we're just unsure whether we'll ever see faker launching those paddle stars and hard carrying games from mid i know we've seen it so many times on stream i'm sure you guys from home have been watching it as well but not going to be able to see it in the LCK, at least not for game number one here in our first telecom war. No Zach ban, and it is the famous pick there for Blank, but he's considering going for what he's in form with. And look at this, they will wow. Hey, they were a okay. solid team and they, they got disbanded. Yeah, it's a bit of a feels bad. On SKT's lineup in early 2016, Nidley was one of the picks. They said they brought him in for his mechanical proficiency over then the other jungler. Now, of course, the coach of SKT, Bengi. So Nidley here is something he's really informal. Like I said, 11 and 2 in his past 7 days. But already Can't seem to make this go any faster. Just yesterday, Here we go. Remember the Galio, best friends forever. This is very much strong So here line. here is our draft today for the first game. This is on 8.1 so there's none of those minion aggro changes and shit like that, but match is Jace top lane with Sejuani, Galio mid and the <clears throat> Wait, that's not the right way around. Hasn't been swapped. And then AD threats. It's probably going to have to be go. the AP Gallio. Waiting for the rest of the swaps to come out so I can get the proper lockup. Hang on. Formula SKT sub, a train there we go. So, <clears throat> Jay, Sejuani, Gallio, Caitlyn, and Jenna versus the Nar, Nidalee, Corky, Tristana, Brom. Very. A trainee. So we got the, the double ADC comp for scaling with good wombo and they've got like a lot of like things to take care of the ADCs as well like they've got the needly heal and such like that. Whereas KT got that really good engage comp with the, the big lock ups, a lot of dive potential and like a lot of damage coming out the back from uh, from Caitlyn as well with the ability to peel on both ends of it. So this is a pretty well rounded team comp by KT. SKT's team comp is definitely very strong as well. They both picked really well here. Into void stuff, full AP, and just relying on the resist you get from W and the tankiness of Galio's kit could go full tank, but then there are some damage concerns. Surprising to see Galio, it feels like out of nowhere. It is, it is a bit odd that Galio is like still getting a retained place here, but it more so people trying to figure out like what works for them as well. Fantastic lane matchup. I like what KT have done, but once again, it's SKT. Knowing exactly what they want to do and then picking for that as well. And the thing for KT is you like the draft. If it goes AP Galio, maybe there's enough damage from the Galio as well. But the caveat always is KT so rarely. All right, get folks, all their we ready? In order yeah. in the same game. In the same game where Smeb is popping off, Deft might be putting down a control ward, face checking and dying. They very rarely get everything together. But as a holistic draft on paper, 
you love KC. On paper, you predict great things out of KT, but the paper gets ripped off, ripped up more often than not. So let's see if they can actually put that. Just writing down the team comp as well for the VOD just to make it easier. Game composition that could tear up KT Rolster as well. KT Rolster is going to have to have one of those early games that they've been known for having. The telecom war, ladies right. and gentlemen, is about to unfold. It's time to head. Telecom war up in this beach. Let's go. Whoa. Jesus. Literally came straight back in and there's a face check. I can see you. What happened there? Sometimes you got you can't wait for the cheers because uh, there's people dying. Yeah, score was already flashed. Smev didn't use his flash. Wait, what even happened? There? So score flashed out. Smev didn't use his flash. Got killed. They commit the they commit the ignite onto him as well. What happens here? They just came out. They literally come out from the camera and suddenly someone's dead. Ah! Like, the aim is to obviously go back to blue buff here, but, like, SKT are just doing that cheekiness and just sitting in the jungle okay, waiting for him. we got a face check, guys. SKT already using their flashes. Smev's going to be taken down. And this is why sometimes you, got, you can't wait for the cheers. Because uh, there's people dying. Yeah, score was already flashed. Smev didn't use his flash, but went down. Fully out of context there. We also have the... Got the cull start mid from Corky as well. So, very much farm-oriented lane attempt from Faker. He's not really interested in starting up those fights, which is interesting. The early games have to go right. Katie just tried to rush in. They W'd their W start from Marta. They thought, okay, this will be fine. Let's back away. SKT were lying in wait. Not sort of brush that you see started on. You don't often see four-man camps, but... But yeah, that was an interesting four-man camp there from SKT. I don't think they... We're, very, we're really worried about like anything else going on from there, but so oh hang on, I just lost the item stance. Hang on, wait for that to go away. KT score 400 games in LCK. That's a bit crazy. Let's see if he can rewrite history, but for now, not a great look for KT Rolston. No, not feeling brilliant. Smeb, going with some of the area here. Okay, so just to start up, so we're all aware. It is double double relic shields on the side of uh, Trist Brom. Relic shield for Kate with the uh, Frostfang Frostfang from Jenna. So I think I think it's called Frostfang for the first for the initial tier. I can't really. I'm still in the way because I forgot to do the thing. Sorry. Thank you. No one actually told me that though. Feels bad. All right. <laughs> Doran's Blade versus Doran's Shield start on top lane. Standard jungle start from both sides, but Needly has the advantage because of the first blood. Cull versus Doran's Ring start in mid lane, so Corky aiming for the farm, not really worried about anything else. Getting into the lane nicely, and we'll see whether Smev's going to be able to have the same level of performance that we saw out of Khan yesterday. Making his debut for 2018 was a terrifying thing to behold. Smev now, see whether he can. Did my chat break? Guys are wondering about the matchup. It is a Jace. I feel like my chat broke. One of those matchups where Nar actually does smart. One of the standard counterpick matchups like Nar versus GP, Nar versus Orn. We've been seeing it very commonly. But both sides know that. Ontara knows it. That's why he's not starting an offensive item. He's going for Doran Shield. Both junglers know it. So there's always this kind of prisoner dilemma of do you gank for it? Are you there for the counter gank? What are they expecting? What is he going to do? What is they going to do? A lot of rock, paper, scissors about situations like that. So no guarantees it's just going to be Smeb rolling his face over the keyboard and taking down Nar. It's just what it is on paper. Well, you can see Death and Marta are certainly playing up. They're abusing the fact that this lane is ridiculously strong in the early levels. I mean, it's a free Caitlyn lane, which oh, is always yeah. a happy way as Antara gets very aggressive with his level three. Yeah, heading into the Mega Nar and Smeb has to smack him away. That's a huge... Those have really, like, bent, hell-bent on taking their lead from the beginning and starting off. They're looking very... Like, their posture for it. Even with the cull on, uh... On Corky, he's still not even, like, worried about it. It's just, like, you take the cull for the purpose of farming, but he just thinks that he can still go ahead and be very aggro with it. But everyone's, like, moving forwards just so that Plank can go for the invade as well. Like, they all they always do this together, right? So they'll go for the... They'll go for the fight early, 
rather go for the fight they like shut they be aggressive and shove up in the lane so that it can actually be like sorted out that way and because of that it allows blank to get into the jungle and like do these plays together so you can't actually draw away any sort of just any sort of like counter aggression okay we've got runes here as well sorry i forgot to check runes for everyone that was watching Summon area on the side of Smeb for the poke. That appears to be... Um, what is that on Sejuani? Hang on. Hang on. That is... What is that on Sej? Is that fleet footwork? Is that is that fleet footwork that I'm seeing in uh, Sejuani's thing? Can't see the icon very well because of the quality of the video. Hang on. Can no one else see? It is fleet footwork. Okay, I'm not I'm not blind. It is fleet footwork, which is uh, interesting to say the least. But. Yeah, so that is Fleet Footwork Sejuani. Aftershock Galio. Those are both domination. Aftershock Galio with Precision. Which is probably for Triumph, etc. Uh until it's bubble Caitlin with uh Precision. Oh wait, no, that's sorcery for Galio, sorry. And then summon Airy for Janna with inspiration versus summon airy on nah why is airy still a thing quick question hello green gary how you doing my man what is your highest what was your highest solo queue rank i assume this is in league of legends you're asking I gotta have that in a in a bot command. But yeah, <laughs> um, so in league, my so in season two, I reached the equivalent of challenger on NA, which at that point was diamond. I reached twenty two seventy five elo, and I was doing pretty good with that. And then I got pretty sick, so I took quite a bit of time off. Uh, in season five, I did make another solo queue push myself. I think I got as high as diamond two or three. I think diamond. Three, I'm not sure. Then, yeah, during that time as well, I just picked up the coach uh, some teams. My most notable coaching gig was coaching the Chaos Latin Gamers to their Season 5 Summer Split Championships. And then I um, was told I wasn't required anymore during their World's like, Push campaign. So unfortunately, they actually lost in the qualifier. They took most of my knowledge with them to uh, to their match against Pain, but they they just couldn't push through with, their, with the other coach there instead of me. And then I did... An OPL gig in season six with Infernum Gaming, but it didn't go too amazingly. Other than that, I just kind of more so stuck with just player coaching and sort of biding my time and just doing stuff like that. Ended up going pro in Overwatch scene in Oz as well, I'm doing that for a bit. And then, yeah, rest is history. I'm now here coaching, doing all the good stuff. Hope that answers your questions. So yeah, grab a drink, sit around. I forgot to open mine because I'm a bit slow. That's fine, mate. Grab a drink, have a watch. I'll prove it to you if you're still skeptical. But yeah, on the side of SKT, I'll just do the runes quickly. Uh, Airy plus Inspiration. I think that's Inspiration. Fuck, I can't see this. These, these icons are hard to read, man. Electrocute with Inspiration, Fleet of Foot with Inspiration, Fleet of Foot with Inspiration again, and then Guardian and Inspiration. So, pretty pretty well-rounded set of runes. I think the interesting one is obviously uh, Fleet of Foot Sedge, but yeah, there, there's, there's been some talk about it being really interesting just because of the damage she does. Are they all stopwatch? Hello, Huggable Duckling, how are you doing? Uh, we've got a lot of Inspirations being drawn out here. As for the stopwatches that I can see so far, I count one... Hang on, one for Janna? Doesn't appear to be one on Janna. So we got one on the side of KT. 
on the side of SKT, we have three. So there's a few stopwatches hanging out for the time being. All right, let's continue. But yeah, the counter aggro has come out for the KT's bot lane, so they're definitely interested in sorting and like putting their stake on it. They definitely want the first tower very quickly, so they're just shoving the wave up. They're expecting to draw the jungler's attention sooner or later as well. I'm really surprised Score didn't go home from here, but so he's just ended up doing the the rounds with warding. Smeb and Tara are like riding this very closely. So both the junglers have ended up going home. It's a bit unfortunate that the lead is squarely on the shoulders of of Needly at the moment just because of the free first blood. That's just like the saddest part in the opening. Risky, but he's certainly going to be getting his gold generation on, pushing up and using the W off cooldown. So far, Jeff farming out extraordinarily well. 15 CS ahead, five minutes into the game is nothing to scoff at. But yeah, pushing just a lot of just a lot of the standard farming that you'd expect in Korean meta. Got the early shame from Corky to go ahead and farm out his lane. Can't really see him having any issues whatsoever with uh with the Galio lane at all. Around. This is yeah, this is looking like a pretty good fight for for KT. Gintara can't do anything to get away. He's been stunned before he can get into Meganar as well, so that's a free kill. Gintara didn't think he was going to get away with that because of double flash. He just held on to it. What's the point of a nitpick with no winning lanes? Uh, late game. Like, if Nidalee can farm, it's not really like, any sort of misnomer because you can just get the Grail and just start throwing shit down onto your onto your carries. They, it provides really good poke too, like they have a lot of decent poke, and if you get a spear target onto somebody, you'll definitely be able to sort that out from there. So maybe I'm a little confused as to why Faker is in bot lane. Yeah, it's a very awkward play from SKT to send like Faker to bot. I assume they thought that the aim was just to shove out the wave and see if they can go from there, but I don't think that was a good idea. I feel like, yeah, like, if anyone wants to comment on it already, like, Bang is definitely, like, getting worse and worse as seasons have passed. And it's making... It's really bringing out the best in some of these other carries because the oppressive style that, like, SKT were running before it seems to be very, very slow off the mark. And they've got these top lane. They've got a top laner now that really does not have as much presence as the as the previous ones have. They, when they put Thalin, it's a little stronger, but the guy is a bit green, so that's obviously the biggest problem there. But yeah, the main purpose in Italy, like first and foremost, is to if if there's no winning lanes because you wanted a farm, you will effectively try to augment the late game just by purely being able to. Help your AD carries be amazing. Like the damage output is really good there, and they have the Nah and the Brahm to be good enough tanks, so they don't need a third. Wouldn't an Ivern do the same thing but better? Not entirely, because Ivern, uh, Ivern's clear speed is very, very awkward early game. And that's kind of always been the hardest thing about putting him in competitive play. And when they nerfed him, it was a bit difficult for anyone to really like press that, press that sort of advantage. And yeah, you, you lose out on the poke. You lose out on the... Um, you lose out on the damage too. Like Ivan doesn't really bring as much damage as Nidalee does. But with the nerfs to like Daisy and all that sort of stuff from Ivan, it's very hard to actually sort this out. 
Okay. That's also, note something, interesting choice of rune here from Dev. He actually hey, goes yeah, for Unsealed Spellbook, kind of a Sibiresque approach of whatever happens in lane. But yeah, Unsealed Spellbook for Dev, he switched to the Teleport as well, so they got that very aggro style, very aggro farming style as well. So hopefully this is far better than the Sivir attempt that they ran previously. Do they need damage with two ADCs already? Uh, poke damage, yes. They would need the poke. Plus they need the heal and peel. So nearly kind of provides everything there. Plus the traps give better vision control. Is building purely for lane. You look at the enemy team, and the first item that comes to your head is not Blade of the Rune King, given that it's very, very squishy from the side of SKT. But Blade of the Rune King into the Black Cleaver was the build we saw from Khan, and it just destroyed the Nar. Feels like we're gonna be Wait, who is the second ADC? Khan. It's Corky and Trist yeah. in this game. Corky, you can treat as either or. It really depends on what you're trying to, what like what you believe it is. You don't, yeah, like, I don't think anyone's played Corky in bot lane in two seasons now. So I guess you kind of value him as a mid lane mage. <laughs> uh, uh, carry uh, ADC mage type thing. So yeah, Cloud Drake versus Top Tower. We don't know who wins that. I never thought of Corky as an ADC. A long time ago, he definitely was. Now you kind of value him as a mid laner more. But again, he's still very... He, do, he does, still has the auto attack focus. Papa Corgi is an 80. Oh, hey, Rez. How you doing, man? If his my viewer list is broken again, it won't actually tell me who's in the chat, so I can't say hi in advance to people anymore. Sad face. Yeah, this has been a very awkward start for SKT, even though they got the first blood and they had like some good vision control, they couldn't even get like some of their initial cooldowns off the ground, like they couldn't use the, the package to get around the map, they couldn't use... I wish I could see us as well as these guys in the LC. Yeah, look, we all wish we could, personally. <laughs> I can only do it if I have good, a good ability spammer. But yeah, so they couldn't use the package to their advantage on uh, from Corky to sort the fight. They didn't have the mage potential to really like get the stuff off the ground from there, so it was a bit painful. I wish I could quit League of Legends. <laughs> oh man, I did a did a game. Testing, there we go. Oh, bloody, let me just make sure I can hear things. Yeah. All right. Again, I'm sorry about the headset dying. I really, really just, yeah, look, I'm, as I said before to people that are new here, I, any donations that go towards the, the stream, they are 100% towards getting new hardware. I need a new computer and a new headset. Like, all this stuff you see here is four, four plus years old, and it's, fuck it, it's on the fritz. And I'm not enjoying, like, getting my street, my getting my train of thought cut off by having to fix hardware, I tell you that much. Anyway, I shall continue. Um, yeah, they lost, all, they lost everything from the, the back, like, the timers on everything towards that. So, they're really aiming for... The aggro start for like look, look at Def CS already. He's four, nearly 40 CS ahead of uh, of Bang. Like he's just got such a good advantage here. Like Score is able to move around the map really well, like in his beefy state too. Look at that pain. 
on top of score and Marta's going to be able to pick up the Look at that. Like, bot lane is just getting absolutely trumped. I legit just did 150 donation to someone two days ago. Well, I... Like, that's totally okay. I'm sure they deserved it. But... You're fine. Don't worry. Don't worry about, like, just doling money out at me. I'm not... Yeah. <laughs> just come... Just sit down and enjoy yourself. You're brand new here. I've never seen your name before. So, yeah. Just relax. You know, drop a follow. Just enjoy yourself. I'll think about you next time. You're a sweetheart. I, I feel the love. Yeah, and I just feel like draft-wise, I know blue side certainly does have a little bit of favor when you're drafting. You can create the situation that you want, but... This team comp from SKT is a bit of a... It feels like a bit of a sandbag, in, in all honesty to me. Like, it just feels like a sandbag in the sense that their comp feels very outdated. I know Andari. Yes, I do know Andari. Andari, I uh, raided with him. Oh wait, you're from you're from Effect Discord. I recognize you. Yeah, I'm the GM of Effect, and and Ari is one of my bitches. I'm his childhood friend. Aww. I'm glad Andari makes friends because he's an absolute asshole to me sometimes. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. And then you add in an SKT over pursue against a Galio hero's entrance. This is the result as it should be. Vanish KT Rolster. Yeah. Abyssal mask now done. Yeah, the comp the comp feels a bit outdated for SKT. I haven't seen Corky mid in a, in a fair while. Seems very uh out, outdated. It's like a this is like a place the feelers out comp and sandbag if uh if it's a bit of a problem. Same, same. <laughs> no worries, no worries. Bit of a strange choice. It is because he's against Nidalee and so the magic was just getting a lot of value, but definitely not buffing up damage for anyone else on the team. Short so wait, did you see me streaming in Effect Discord and that's why you're here? Or did I post somewhere that caught your attention? Where's the Lucian mid? <laughs> if the game slows down, you will be outscaled in terms of damage. If you're just the thing, like, even, like, even against Needly, like, in the jungle, like, even Sedge does better damage than the Needly can as well in most of these situations. So I don't get... I feel like the whole draft from SKT is a bit awkward. Like, I know what it's there to do, but I feel like just in regards to champion strength and the new runes, I feel like... Oh, it is effective squad. No worries, man. But yeah, I feel like just in regards to the champion strength and what they want done here, I feel like KT has definitely got the, the upper hand. And like, yeah, their, their choices were a bit awkward too. Like, you get the... You trade top turret for a cloud drake. Like, that's just not right. I couldn't see that being a viable thing there. I just don't see why you would ever want to do that. I love the score also has taken, you know, a page from Umpty's book. He went fleet footwork. He was supposed yeah. to be proactive this game. He ran around the map, three assists, did not die, had to use his flash level one. But Is the, the stream stable? I keep getting warnings that my bitrate's not holding up. Proactivity. Caitlin Jana in lane against the tank support. Proactivity. It is at the cost of late game. No aftershock. Galio, right now, very low damage build. But for now, it is also complete supremacy in the early to mid game. We'll see whether some of these item spikes that are coming... Of Apto? Yeah, I know Apto. I don't know him personally, obviously, but I know who he is. Why? ...for a much safer build, picking up that uh, Frozen Mallet instead of the Black Cleaver that we see so often. Ooh! Glittering price! Whoa, 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 whoa. Hang on. <laughs> okay. I didn't mean it, like, literally just throw this out. Oh, come on, man. Oh, you're killing me, man. All right. Regretful Dessert donated what I'm assuming is 150 Oz, because I've got it. In, it comes up in American. Don't, it says, don't worry, fam. I got you covered. Let's get you that PC upgrade. You are actually killing me right now. Actually, oh. Thank you, really. <laughs> Thank you for the... I never know how to take... Go away, man! <laughs> of course I don't know how to take it. How do you feel when someone just, like, randomly throws money at you and says, Oi, you're amazing. Like, fucking deal with it. Like, how do you deal with that? <sighs> anyway, regretful dessert. Thank you very much. I will thoroughly work towards getting that PC upgrade. I have a feeling I have to put a goal down just so that people can just be aware how close this is getting because, yeah, this is getting pretty cool. But yes, I can't thank you enough. Really heartfelt. Thank you very much. Send him nudes on SC.
Are you <laughs> are you still trying to compete with Evie? Oh God, that's the, look, man. Look, I won't tell you like how much Evie has done for me. But I thoroughly thankful for her, for her. But you are hilarious, and thank you very much for grateful deserve for that donation. Really heartfelt appreciation. Make break that. No, Rez, Rez, no. It's not a thing. It's not happening. It's not happening. Do I have to set like a really stupid like donation goal for that? Because I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to dab. I'm not going <laughs> to. No. All right. Let's try and do this again. I'm going to try and maintain my composure and continue on with the show. But again, regretful dessert. Thank you. Much appreciated. It's totally going to be a thing. Dab for 1K. What? Are, are you telling me you're going to throw a thousand dollars at me to dab? Become the bias face. <laughs> wait, just wait. It, you're telling me Tobias Fate has a camera now? And he dabs? As a goal. I uh, say, but because my, my, I, oh, I'm not going to, I would literally dab for a straight Tobias Fate is a sellout. Yeah, look, 100%. But I would literally just say, you'd have to literally dab. Sorry, you'd have to donate 1k flat on the spot. Gift $100 for flashing on the tower. God, no, I wouldn't do that shit. I want to, I would still want to win. I have to prove, I have to showcase that I'm still not a brain dead monkey outside of like reviewing people. I have to do this properly. I can't just like be really good at gangplank and just suddenly believe that like everyone's going to totally love me for it. But yeah. Oh. I mean, that's what Tobias' fate is. I know, but I can't do that. I'm not as good at that. I, like My best champions are literally, like, are basically brain dead on their own, according to some people. But yeah, you'd have to donate 1K flat. Like, one person has to donate 1K if you want me to dab. I'm not bullshitting. I, I'm not I'm not debasing myself with a dab just, just, for, just for the sake of it. That is, that is the most you're getting out of me. So, if anyone's that insane to waste their money for a dab... 99% of league champions are brain dead. Yeah, look. Potato, potato. Probably right. Anyway. Let's continue before I get distracted again. So yeah. Solid double clear from score. As you do. Triforce already complete. I am not doing the dab as it. No, 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 no. Rez. No. <laughs> I'm going to try and like hold my convictions about this because in all honesty, dude, if I'm ever going to hit a dab, I'm going to be drunk off my head and I'm going to dab so hard. I'm literally going to put my head right through my forearm and I'm going to knock myself out. What is your opinion on Camille? Boss ass. That bitch is broken. I am not a fan of Camille. Has all the tools in every station of the game. Literally, what I've always hated about Riven is now even more augmented in Camille. 1K USD. Yeah, 1K USD. USD. Don't screw with me. I, I can't believe I'm actually... I, why are we even talking about this? I'm starting a revolution. It's res. I actually have to deal with you about this. We're going to have a chat. Have a very long chat. But yeah. 1K USD. Don't know. On its own. Flat dono, and there'll be a dab. Why am I? Why? Why am I discussing this with you people? What did you hate about Riven? Literally everything. But yeah, the fact, like, the thing I hated about Riven, right? Before, like, the numerous nerfs and all the changes to her, the thing I hated about Riven is that if played correctly, Riven, or even played like remotely decent, you could play Riven like a brain dead monkey. And the be the best thing about Riven is that she had the tools to do the highest amount of damage output in one combo in the game. More so when her ulti was on. But you top that with the highest amount of mobility and the highest and like a decent amount of sustain and shields from her from her E. I like my initial thoughts is that that is actually insane. Like you give all these tools to one hero. Granted, there have been a lot of gutting sort of things to like really handle it. Now, I'm only voicing this opinion as a solo queue thing because it's like obviously people just don't deal with it properly. It's like saying like... 
Tracer and Overwatch is overpowered because of all of her like mobility and sustain and stuff like that. But it's kind of negated because of how low her health is. She's so squishy and weak to CC, CC though. Yeah, that's totally fine. But how often in a, in a solo queue state, do you actually get people that are capable enough of A, lining up their CC and B, properly bursting down the target against the Riven? Because in all honesty, in the years that I hated her, it was impossible. People couldn't do it. It was really freaking difficult for people to actually coordinate shit. That was when I was much like more active in playing League. Like if I started playing it again now and I'm just like, nah. Lock in Lulu and press one button on her. I still think Lulu would definitely get ruined. If that doesn't work, just press that exhaust button. 90% sure Riven could still do more damage through that exhaust because of how average exhaust is now compared to before. But yeah, compare that to Camille now. Camille is literally what Riven was like many years ago, but add like fuckloads of true damage. And that's the scary thing. Like, there's just so many things that like are available for Camille as well. And it's like, just every fucking sub fuck like This guy's definitely, is, is a bit of, bit of a, <laughs> a bit of a Riven main. But yeah, um, Camille definitely has like the bigger sort of advantage compared to thing. But yeah, you just incorporate like all these extra like damage abilities and all this sort of stuff. But the thing that makes Camille busted is that like in laning phase, the one thing that's like a big, like, oh my God, that's really a thing is you can actually, you get the free passive that cancels out a section of your enemy's damage just because you're Camille. Like, it's literally nothing from runes, nothing from anything else. It's just Camille gets this shield against your type of damage dealt. Deal with it. Like, that's it. And if Camille's running on you, you're just like, well, guess I'll take this lo losing trade. That's, like, it's just fucked. Like, she just gets that free trade every, what is it, 18 seconds or something? That free 1v1 potential is just crazy. And the amount of burst she does and the fact that Hextech Ultimatum literally just like crams everything into the one spot just makes it insane. Like it was good that when like Lee Sin was more prominent because Lee Sin would just kick a straight out of Ultimatum. It's like, yeah, well, fucking buy. That's the end of that. But yeah, like with the favor and meta at the moment, it's just kind of really hard to like do anything about Camille apart from banning her. I'm going to try and do this again. No more talk of dabs and donations or anything like that. I'm going to try and just review this game. Please. Oh, Def just pulling the... Def is literally just putting the pain on Bane because he doesn't give an absolute shit. Can we get a meta wipe for real? Yeah, look, there's a lot of meta wipes you wish would happen. There have been some really ugly metas across, ev across both League and Overwatch. Like, you can argue about, like, some metas being better than other others, don't, don't get me wrong, but... Everyone will always have a preference, but you have to really just balance the spectator view versus what the players want. And that's kind of the problem. Deft is playing out of his skin right now. Perfect mechanic, starter step, all of it. It's really good. But yeah, like, we're at 17 minutes right now. Look at the CS difference between bot lanes and top lanes. It's just a lot going on there. But yeah, so <clears throat> the Bork, Bork Cleaver build from Jace to take down Nah with relative ease. Good dueling power, etc. will take down everyone else. Plus the Black Cleaver will do a lot of damage versus the things here. Keep in mind, Vision Game is very strong on the on both sides here because yeah, we've got the Vision Wards all packed out from KT. SKT, they're not out yet. They're not ready for this actually like sorted out. Triple tank in both at the same time. SKT is getting strangled out. Strangled out is an understatement, my dude. It's literally like boot to throat type, right? By now, SKT have already fallen over. But yeah, they're definitely prepared. They're gonna go for probably um, Herald Baron, depending on what's uh, how long they want to wait for it. Like in the three-minute block that they have right now, they get their goal is to either take they don't there's no in it they're out of turrets to take, so they would probably want Rift Herald as an objective. And just more map presence. So yeah, they're going for Rift Herald. They've got the the coverage to handle it. Not really an issue at all. Tanks can take it relatively fast, so no real need for any of the damage dealers or wave clearers to get involved in triple control wards. Says, hey, this is our objective, and SKT obliged. You say all all the control wards around there. So there's one in the two on either side of the river, and one to cover up the top end. 
Literally nothing SKT could do to even want to invade that. I mean, they have a chance, like a Nara Engage will win them the game, a Solid Engage it is. It wouldn't win them the game, but it would bring them back into the game at this point in time. But there's nothing to take off that Engage, though. Like, if they win the fight, like, what do they take? A tower. That's the only thing they could take fast enough. But SKT is scared, Atlas. They don't feel like they can walk up and clear any of that control vision. Beautiful stuff from Pete. Like, depending on how forward aggressive their positioning is, if they engage on them at Rift Herald and took it, they would the most they would get before KT would come back alive to re-engage them would literally just be one tower. Pushing forward very impressively. Very impressively. And now they do have that Rift Herald that we were talking about. So we'll see which lane they are gonna throw that one down in. Pings on the bottom side. You can see Smeb, lot of wave clear to his name. Two items now picked up. We're talking about item spikes on the side of SKT. Now it's two items for death. This is an accelerated Caitlyn as well. So normally you're talking about item spikes when you're hitting about three, when you're hitting four, but when it comes at this fast a clip before 20 minutes... Item spike advantage still heavily favors, S uh, still favors KT, because you got two items on the side of Jace versus the one and a half items from Nah. Bot lane is two items completed versus one and, a, one and, one and two thirds. So it's not an amazing time for anyone that isn't deaf than Jace right now. A lot of meanwhile is that happening here. Bot lane, Jace, and Sejuani. So yeah, they've, dro they've dropped the Rift Herald down to try and get the extra pain onto that turret too. Untara still has turret HP. Can't see exactly the value, but doesn't end up being a massive value use of the Rift Herald. Can't be a whole lot, but you can see the group up here from SKT. But yeah, so <clears> with the forward positioning that they have, oh, that was a huge play. Picks it up all too easily. Baker actually uses the package to With the forward positioning they have from mid and bot, la bot lane, they're just able to, hang on, so I'll just get this here. With the rotate they're able to take through this line to get to this tower, they're able to just like keep going back and forth between both turrets, and that's what they're aiming to do. So they put Drace plus Rift Tower bot side, so that he was able to do the split push without with even less to worry about for that for that fight. And then basically KT would just shove the wave, and then they would figure out which side SKT are going to take. And if they don't commit people to the Rift Herald on the other side, it's one it's one turret for free. If they commit people to the other side, they just catch them on the, on the rotate and just get the fight. So they get rid of Brom because he was the closest one there, and they wait and Fake had to use his package to get out, so he had no chance to do anything. Yeah, sure, but I'm saying that KT is just flying off the lead with the lead ATM. Don't think it's if this went even, KT would win. From the team comp analysis, I would say KT still has a chance to do better if they were even because they have better engage. Like, they have much better engage. Like, there's no frontliner outside of Nara, and Nara is like, if Nara's not in Mega and he's not in the front and they're not, and they're not split apart, then... That's the thing. Hang on, so just the thing, right? The beginning of this fight, score has perfect frontal like position here to be aggressive, and the only person that can aggress him in the, in this area is Effort as a tank, and being aware of that, even though like he is a, like being aware of that, Blank just says fuck it and leaves. Okay, true. Brahm has to be peeling, so one front line is rough. Yeah, so you can't just expect Brahm to be in the front, right? Their whole hope and dream is that, yeah, like this counter engage is what KT want to do, so they keep Nar in the in the back as well. But if they're not together, they're fucked. So right now, you got score. You got what the stronger front line versus the other. So core, score is totally capable of just charging through here, dropping the ulti, which he does. He drops the ulti and it scares off Faker. Faker just runs out with the package. And this is how the fight goes free for them. Like, look, one tank here, one tank on the aggressive position again. If this was like, like maybe a couple of seconds earlier, he'd be on all, all of them with the with the taunt, and they'd be all dead. He walks too close into melee range. Why does he get auto attacked by score to let, allow this to start stacking up with the concussive blows? Unnecessary, but a bit of nerves, a bit of rookie status, and a bit of advantage for KT. Yeah, KT looking brilliant. I, I sort of want to go back to the scaling point as well, Papa Smithy, because you can see in the item build coming out of Mata, he's building towards the Arden Sensor. He's already being. Yeah, like all, all the scaling points still go to KT just because Arden Sensor is still good. Like the Janna is capable of like holding this on. This is still. Like, even if this was even, I would still give the team comp, like, advantage to KT just because of the front line. Like, the front line is way better. So 
is so great. And then he's going to get charged up even more when that Ardent Sensor does come in. This is a get behind the Caitlyn type composition with, like you say... So they can, because they can actually take a damage top laner as well and just, like, make that really strong. Now, larger than attack speed item in the Ardent Sensor. So it's a different take on the meta. We would have thought Redemption, right? You wouldn't even look once you saw a Forbidden Idol, but does look like, at least from the items, that it will be the Ardent Sensor in 2018. Cue the memes <laughs> as we turn to the game. Also, Fiendish Codex for Galio. Excited to see what that turns into. Oh, yeah. Bit on the AP side. You can't get away with just being purely tanky as Galio. He does have his timepiece, so it might be his on his hourglass to start off having a little bit of that physical defense whilst being able to go golden as often as possible. That feels a little bit more meta. We've got an Arden Sensor and the Stopwatches now. It feels brilliant. Arden Sensor and Stopwatches. One's pushing up. Galio pushing Corky. Top side, Jace pressuring Nard. Expected. A 1-3-1, though. Once again, I mean, it was Jin Air making it work earlier on today. Now it's KT making it look pretty good. Okay, but think back. KT played a lot of this style last year, but where did it go wrong, Atlas? It was always they took a risk too far. Someone was too headstrong, got caught, and then about you back away. So yeah, well. the, the note there about KT is like risk-taking going wrong for them. This is where they have to be cautious here, is when they start posturing around the around the objectives. So they've got a really good like peel off here and they can handle themselves. Oh, walk, walks into that. Feels bad. Unfortunate in SKT trying to get a foothold back in this game, and if KT don't offer mistakes, they keep methodically taking turret after turret, breaking the base, tricky, but backing off to Baron and knowing there's going to be no real vision from SKT, that is the calculated move when you're in a scenario like this. Yeah, we've uh, spent a day, you know, in our last two games talking about not a lot of siege opportunities. KT have got a hell of a lot of siege opportunities. And they've got Monsoon to stand back and pick up all of their health again if they do get poked out, things like this. Like, SKT do have a lot of poke options, but it's not... So really look at the rotation the now from KT and where they're sitting and where they're standing. Such a range, especially when like, you want... Like, Jace has got the, the positioning for bot now to get as close to the inhibitor as possible. Now, it's really all just up to KT for them to just, like, position themselves around Baron and get that sorted out. I think, ja I think Jace might even solo Dragon just because it's free and there's no one there to contest him. Yeah, he's going to do it now. No one's going to contest him there, so he can just freely take it. So KT can just keep rotating between mid and top and cleaning it out and then using Jace to get around with that. No one has even fought Smeb for the Drake, which is just insane. Mistakes yet. It leads to a it's actually run. insane how much they're leaving him alone. They are rich, they are, don't even care about Jace in the bot lane anymore. They honestly think they're just going to win these fights without that. And that's, that's very scary to me. Like, that feels very awkward to me. Ooh, new people. Hello. Say hi if you're in the chat. Especially in KSV games, these teams are able to suffocate their opponents. I don't think I've ever seen SKT successfully suffocated out of a mid, mid game. So I think where if it happens, you really do a double take and wonder if you're. So stranglehold still a thing. Still got the the Matt, the lead building up for top and bot lane. Mid lane's going to stay even for this entire time because there's no reason for either of them to get into these fights. But it's not a big risk factor for anyone on the side of anyone on the side of KT there are two people sitting bot lane which is nah. they are in the hopes that they can ambush uh, Jace but again not really a thing they're going to do it now they're going to try and get onto Smev and I think Smev is very much aware of it Hi Napalm, how you doing? 
Well, he's going to walk into them now as Antara and Faker actually just really playing the dosido. -do. They want to set up this sick flank, but are they too late? As SKT taking a lot of damage, they have moved themselves away. But that flank option not quite there because just couldn't quite get into position in time. That was almost the stars aligning, but just not quite. Yeah, no value from Live the ultimate ish. <laughs> You'll be all right. You'll be all right. No Grab a drink. Come enjoy time, the show. There's, only three. Let's go for it. there's no need for like KT to over overextend themselves now. They've got the vision game. They're capable of where everything is. Score is just scared flat. Bang off. And Faker gets chunked out by Deft. Does have that Arden sensor available to him. Effort once again getting abused. Underneath this turret, they've got the trap. The damage is just chunking out there, but yeah, unfortunately, Def takes away way too much damage. Oh, they used the Janna ult to heal him up. Oh dear, Effort just ran out too early again. Good, good dodge by Def to be able to keep that fight forward. For the protection, they get one pick, and does this mean back? Let's just go back here. So, they use the ult, the Janna ult, to get the heal off and keep them healthy. SKT, I don't think, are aware of this because they think that, uh, that they think that they can get the engage here. So, effort goes forwards in the attempt to do so, but again, this, this is their only front line again. This is their only front line right now because Na is in Africa, so they decide that, like. And then they realize that they've made this mistake to go for this, and they don't go for it. And Def dodges this perfectly. So the fight breaks out here. They take down Effort. Jay says, fuck this, I'm going in as well, because he knows he can be uh, shielded up. So he goes hardcore onto Antara. They waste the exhaust, a bit unfortunate, but he jumps out. But they've definitely done like a lot of damage to sort this to sort this play out. So they can go for Baron. Like, this is very much easy for them. Guaranteed to SKT. This is what's happening. Don't need advanced vision. When you see that, no way the only thing I'm trying to figure out... Okay, so they're going for the bait. The, see, they've got the TP here. They're 100% going for the bait, but the, the ghost catches out score. See, once, uh, once it goes away, right? Once that item goes away, that would have been a face check. 100% face check. But KT, yeah, KT kept it safe there because they wanted to be sure they were prepared. And yeah, that's where it goes. But yeah, they would have gone... Like, needily using the, the ghost to, to fight the fish them out first is totally good. But yeah, needily wasn't there at the time. It would have ended up in him being there. So they just abuse effort again by the look of it. Yep. They're body blocking effort as well. There's nothing he can get out to, but he... Oh, he gets the W off. That's lucky. Super tanks on the side of KT. Oh, still just feels on such a knife edge. You can see the gold so far in favor of KT. 7,000 or something of the like, but they're still playing so, so reserved. So, so scared of what SKT can do in these mid games. But yeah, the fear is there. So I think KT, I think SKT are aware of it now that KT might go for it. But I don't think they're going to finish it. Nah. Into a 50 50 situation, they've been here before, and they don't want to be on 50 50 either against the against the execute from Nidalee, so they're just not going to go for it. The watcher 6,000 gold lead has kind of been the number for a while now. It seems how are we feeling necessarily as big a deal as it was 10 minutes ago. Nothing has happened. Yeah, look at Jace's items, though, dude. A single pick onto effort, they couldn't kill him again the second time, tanky enough with just two items, just with the locket really being his big purchase after the sight stone. They back away. They don't necessarily like Nah had to de had to uh, delay his core build just to get get some tankiness on him. BBQ thought they were in a unlosable position against BBQ in match two yesterday, and then what is taken down the late game by double eighty. BBQ against BBQ. Double eighty carry is adding on item after item. Every back they add to their core, they get closer to six items, and a six item team fight. You look to SKT to likely win. And you can see that Deft actually agrees with you, Papa Smitty. He doesn't want this game to go too much longer. He's got the GA to make sure that the next team fight, he's going to be able to jump back up again. He's going to survive. He's not going to get picked. They're looking for these traps. They're looking for the bait and switch play. Unbreakable, of course, going to eat that ultimate. 
not easy to actually use the initiation they have. Sejuani can be QSS or can be dodged. And Sejuani needs to be there as a conduit to Galio to initiate. It's really only Sejuani to enable the hero's entrance to be offensive. You know like Papa Smoothie like says like it's only the Sejuani, but the truth is like it's it's a mix. Like the the, the availability is there, uh, and Sejuani is augmented by the Galio, and Jace can even like do a pseudo engage and be augmented by the Galio. But on the side of SKT, it's literally just effort will get chunked and killed instantly if he try attempts to do this. So it's really just the problem is they have to rely on Nah, and if he doesn't have it, it's not a thing. I think Skull went a bit overzealous with that ulti. But yeah, Warmogs is keeping Score like way, way too healthy in this. So without SKT being able to re-engage quick enough, Score can just regen his health. It's not even a remote problem right there. So they're gonna try and bait it out again. Cannot complete the Baron, it's turn on to death. Yeah, heroic entrance is going to be there. They're even going to use death as bait now just because, and it appears it's gone horribly wrong for Blank and they kill him off. much better taking this big purple monster. And that's why you go for the Guardian Angel. You didn't notice a flash or a heal coming out. They were happy to power it down. All right, score. The smites escaped you before. You need to hit it here. This would be one hell of a steal if they do it without the smite, but he's going to be. But now, very, very easy to take it without anyone to fight against him on smite. Kill effort again. Buster shot. Should be the disengage that SKT were looking teleport. for, but a teleport's gonna come in on Tara. He's running for the hills, but he's not running to his inhibitor turrets that should be taking a shellacking now with the newly invented Baron on the side of KT. How much the will, base is broken. How much will KT try to take here? They won't try to end the game. Death time is still very long, but they can get two inhibitors at a minimum. Oh, yeah. Two inhibitors off the back of that one fight, all because Blank just got overzealous trying to kill Caitlyn. Let's just go back. Hang on. Earlier in the game. Yeah. So let's go forward from here. Watch. Watch and learn. The rallying call start. We're in a better spot. We've managed to. So the force attempt comes out again, right? Now, in Caitlyn's position, there are there are shield attempts that can come onto her without any problems whatsoever, right? She's very sustainable and she has GA. Now, <laughs> with the knowledge of her being there, they know she's attacking Baron. She dodges the spear without any issues, right? But this is where it gets funny. KT have already peeled off a Baron. You can see this here. You can see it on the map. They've already peeled off. There's no. There's, they definitely know that the fight's going to be a thing. If anyone is even remotely in range to kill, um, to kill Deft, right? They would be cut off right here by KT's engage. So even if they were in range, it makes it difficult. So the only person that's capable of going for this is Tristana. Tristana jumps straight into it. Nard tries to as well. But the ga the the shields plus Galio's ulti are already onto Caitlyn. And she gets that good, really, really good, like, resistance. Wish my teams could make that call. Yeah, look, you'd have to be very, very hard. You'd be hard-pressed to find that shit in solo queue. But yeah, so the only person that's actually still in range is the one person who's on this side is automatically cut off from his team, which is Blank. And then in that realization, Bang says, fuck it, and literally flashes out instantly. Unitara says, well, I'm out too. I'm bailing. And the only person, unfortunately, that's still there is Blank. They exhaust him up and ki kill him instantly. Free fight. Now, Nah kind of doesn't have Mega anymore, so he can't do shit about this. They'd have to rely on Braum to go in. Not even a remote worry about it. They try and go for it, and then Galio jumps out onto him as well, so they kill Effort instantly. And they try to chase down Nah because he's out of position. They get his flash for free. And from all that, they're just going to absolutely murder murder half the base two inhibitors no worries they retain their baron as well all they have to do is now send the waves up with it and they're fine all vision control retained in that jungle side as well not even a remote problem my dude no fear no fear requirement at all so yeah you can get that one in here poorly done but a solid tristol yeah, the Tristolt was okay to, like, pump them into... The I'm actually surprised they made it into the pit from there. That's literally, like, the maxest range you could get. Like, very close. Very, very close. 
with his relic shield upgraded at the shield there with the guardian angel. I keep flipping over to my stream labs and I see what like regretful desert has done and I'm just like I, I don't know how to react and now KT is even just a couple of even a team fight but a couple of picks away from just ending the game and so interesting here you can see death immediately sells the GA and picks up Imperial Scimitar. They probably got pushed up after halfway. As in the the, ra the max range distance from the thing? Yeah, probably. Yeah, so here, from here, right? All they have to do is get the minion wave up to... At the bare minimum, you want the minion wave to be about here? On, on both sides? So that it will start pushing itself as you start setting up top lane. Like, they pushed out of the wall. Yeah, true. But yeah, the turret was already put to half from the previous team fight as well, so it's very easy to take. At this point, if you're SKT, you're essentially ass uh, assessing yourselves for next game. Like, they're just like, well, this is what we have to do for next game. We'll make some changes here, here, and here. They'll probably ed edge away from the double scaling idea. Because it's not a very good plan to run with when you've got two double engage tanks. Basically full health. Deft is tanking up the turret. He wants to keep his minions alive by the looks of things. And these Nexus turrets... Do they get both Nexus turrets as well? Like, the Baron and everything else that's going there is just huge. Game number one that SK... That KT have done in the past. Nexus is under fire. The big pain, just running it in. Picks up one. We've got low health bars. And Smeb's just fighting Faker. The Flash comes in. The minions are going to be enough. And the Nexus falls. KT, 9 to 1. Dominant... Solid start from KT. Couldn't ask for more. So, hang on. Assuming I've guessed this right. Ten minutes ahead from here. How we doing? How we feeling about the first game? They should feel super good for the next game. They should, but I think that's where the confidence kind of breaks into them a bit. But yeah, Death was just all over at that game. There was nothing that could have possibly been done on either side. So bans, the ban changes from this, right? It's very ADC focused still. They get rid of the Galio because they don't, they're not interested in the heroic entrance anymore and the wave clear that he provides. They get and KT take out the Sejuani because obviously they don't want it to go onto the other side, so they just let that go. However, the Callista is looking pretty good. Looking at this Leona pickup could actually be something that they're serious about. Interesting, they're going to hold the Brom. They're actually going to take the Varus and look for more information. Yeah, Will that wow. information mean the? So yeah, they're not worried about the Brom though, but they go for the right the rise Varus just because they want the stuff. Yeah, this is 8.1, dude. So none of the changes are in for the for some of these heroes yet. Had a good game, but unfortunately, his teammates couldn't hold up to his end of the bargain. Or oh, fake a draft here. The Do they go for Rise and they take Azir just because they want Azir to just absolutely annihilate Old Maiden Lane? Then they pick up the Nah to shore up top lane because Nah is like basically the quintessential safe pick. As your ban, best ban 8.1. Yeah, look, yeah, you just still ban it in 8.1. 8.2 is when it gets different. So, KT said we don't want Camille on the map because fuck that hero, and I totally, totally agree. Quick fast forward to sort out their next bans. The Janna ban from SKT immediately says we don't want to, we don't want the bot lane to be well augmented. I don't think it would work as well with Varus though. Don't quote me on it, but. I don't think it would work as well on Varus. Of the Camille jungle, Nidalee Camille, where his two biggest picks in the jungle wall, Rengar was the next one. So very well could see the Rengar from SKT. So JP Ban from other, from KT says they don't want the carry top laner. So the carry top laners are of KT fear right now. They're really worried about that because they they force foul. They, I think they're just target banning foul because he's he's green. He's new. He's more of a carry player as well. Not as well as the Cade at Solid. Yeah, look, I thoroughly agree. A crazy one. You don't really see too much backline threat short of the ultimate from Callista at this point. But I think there's fishing for information. We've seen a lot of mind games so far from the side of KT. A Soraka would be surprising. The Alistair would be classic Marta. Yeah, standard Alistair play. So Alistair is just the strongest support at this for this type of thing. 
and he's going to be one of the best come uh, come 8.2. So what we're in now. Double spellbook bottom lane, most likely. We have double AP too, if it's going to be the Vladimir lock-in here. Vladimir does not win the matchup against Nara in any significant way. We only have one game of recent oh. evidence, but it was actually the Nara making the winning side of the map. Well, but yeah, Nara gets the freedom out of that as well. As he rise lanes, feels wreck man. <laughs> yeah, looking not wrong. Is one of those tanky frontline threats, can build really strong, but also has the presence in the early game. The other option, obviously, was the Zac. Decides not to go for it. And Zach could be the final pick here for Casey if they feel good enough about the lanes. Uh, the question is, can Ball. they afford to go for a Zach or a Shivana, which would be another choice Same that's story. possible. The lanes are strong so, from KT. So, this is the issue, right? You got the lane... Okay, hang on. I'm just going to wait for them to finish up the trading. With the Presley attack, but it's probably going to have to be a bit more measured from score. And he looks at the lanes and feels strong enough to go... Trade already, you schmuck. Interesting... Interesting drafts here from KT and SKT. It seems like we're going to have a little bit of a delay. Okay. We'll have to use this since apparently it died. But yeah, so SKT's lineup is Vladimir, Javan, Azir, K uh, Kalista, and Brom versus Nash, Vana, Rise, Varus, Alistair. Because apparently they couldn't get the swap off. That's why it went back to fucking champs. Uh, back to mode select. So, SKT very much built around splitting off opponents and getting good wombo with their ultis. They will use Jarvan as the main engage. And that is much more shored up now on this time around. So, it's much simpler for a front line. They, they will literally sacrifice Jarvan every single fight. Brom does Brom's not weak per se, because the stun is literally the most amazing thing. Like extra lockdown that you get for free. The fact that Unbreakable literally cancels out so much shit, it's just really solid. And he's got really good base stats, so he's really good for the majority of the game. However, in a situation that SKT just faced, if Brom falls behind even further, it's not gonna work out for their team comp at all. This case, however, they have just so, they have really good lockdown, so Brahm's ulti is really good, like on top of the Jarvan combo. And plus, every other hero is capable of actually sorting that out. Plus, with Kalista, Brahm can actually use his entire combo off the bat, then get killed, and it won't matter because he's used everything. Full value, full value from his uh, CC abilities. So that's what they're like. They've got the Callista to sort that out because the Lista in this case, it's like, well, Bang's like, well, fuck you. I want to engage. And he just pulls Brahm in and Brahm's like, well, I guess I'm a Pokeball now. And he gets chucked straight into the enemy. And that's how that goes. So, yeah. Thoroughly, 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 thoroughly pushing that towards their advantage. The side of KT though, KT have pretty solid lanes. So the winning lane for Nah means that Shivana... Uh, or the bot lane being a solid lane too, is that basically shivana has got the ability to free farm. That's literally what you want to do, right? You want to have that ability to go ahead and just farm everything. So this is the availability that they have now. There won't be any reason why they can stop any of this. And that's just how that's going to turn out for for KT. So if they make it to mid game, Shivana will just take as many objectives and like everything else as possible and make it really simple for them. Hopefully they don't start off before or after there is a fight. Nothing, thank God. So this is the line of scrimmage play they do instead. There's no invades, there's no cheeky fights. It's just we don't want anyone to do any warding. So they're just literally standing right across the line from each other. Everyone is there in their designated spot to cover an entrance. And that's all they need to do. Their first or last, the KT and SKT fans will always come to team... You got about 10 seconds to grab a drink before the analysis starts. I'd run at full speed. Are the two primary mobile phone carriers here? So Verizon versus AT&T. If you're an American, you understand that this is definitely high stakes. These teams yeah. are both very well supported, very well. The telecom war storyline is like the one thing that has never died over the many years of LCK. It's pretty funny. You know, we got to got to help them. Where were you on the side of Optus versus Telstra? Well, I mean, Custom sport wise, all about Optus, but uh, as far as coverage, you have to go to Telstra. I'm just saying, which side were you on? Telstra. There you go. I was a Telstra man too. I got the bias. I pissed in a bottle just so I can hydrate myself without leaving my computer. Lol, that was a joke. <laughs> a tasteless, tasteless joke. I was stipulated by Riot Games, so we had to. 
It's one of those things you say to clear out the room, which appears to have worked because I don't see anyone here anymore. <laughs> I'm kidding. Buff leash, though, out for SKT. So red buffs start from both sides. It's kind of the game breaker here because we're saying, oh, all the lanes look pretty good, and we know how scary Shabana is if she shows up with a Devourer and a Frozen Mallet without too much action happening. The lanes are looking decent outside of a moment of brilliance from a man like Faker. It feels like the jungler is that great. So I don't think Faker wants any part of this, uh, these shenanigans with Shyvana. So the idea is to just constantly shove up Pawn to get the to get the lead. Just kind of watching on as KT dominated game one. Needs to be more active in game two to give his team something to work with. And naturally, he is going to use that to his advantage. Already, Faker is dominating this lane. He had a feeling that maybe he'd be able to navigate this early game quite well because he knows the other side of the matchup so exquisitely. Four games Sorry, man. That made me tear up. I'll stop with it. Faker lost all his confidence after getting dumpstered against Power of Evil. I mean, don't be sad about it. It's not that weird. It's just kind of strange. <laughs> I mean, I think it's, I, I can see it's a joke. I just don't know how everyone else is going to handle themselves. But yeah, Faker's confidence is a weird one. Yeah, true. There, there was definitely a need for it to be there, but I think that was kind of the problem. He just didn't feel safe in that regard. And that, that feeling of safety is something that Faker needs in order to do what he does best, you know, which is like stomp the competition. We unfortunately I've lost the quality of the video a little bit. It'll probably fix itself up in a moment. If I just up the quality myself this time, maybe that'll fix it. There we go. Easy. Apparently, it dropped a fuckload of frames a moment ago, though, which is a bit scary. Is it still dropping frames, or is it okay? But yeah, bot lane, pretty even. Mid lane, pretty even considering Faker's uh, very early aggression. Bot lane, pretty even. It's pretty standard game. Both sides are looking for the strong laners. Hey, saw your post on Overwatch University still looking for VODs. Yes, I am, my dude. Uh, type in exclamation point Discord in the chat. You can go look at the VOD review criteria there and just make sure that your VOD's up to scratch. And then DM it to me in Discord. And I will add it to the list. Yeah, always looking for more VODs. 100%. Always. Always, 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 always. always. Lovely, man. How long is the list right now? Look, it doesn't even matter. I'm still going to do the... I do streams every day, dude. So I want I want all the VODs. Give me everything. Smash them at me. From what I can remember, I've got enough Overwatch content for two different streams at the moment, I think, depending on how long I stay on. So a couple of three-hour sessions worth, but 
The idea is that I wanted to always stream for longer if I had the content to do so. And that was always the hardest part, was running out of content. So please, just send me all of your VODs. Shivana getting a free jungling phase to just farm up. Doesn't have a farm leader, but camp is a little bit behind. But Shivana just getting a free jungle. Press the attack, heavily expecting score to go frozen mount section. If two items Shivana isn't punished, then short of Jarvan CC, you just can't really emulate the team fight damage and presence over Shivana. Yeah, it feels like a That feeling when you can just give Rack the most garbage vods and feel no guilty because he asked for it, get that bronze commentary. Hey man, look. Don't forget, we had we had the very low-level Genji players of recent. As I said, like you will be expecting the roast. That's all you have to remember is you expect the roast. Game is very even right now because they're both feel like they're just getting the feelers out right here. The biggest fear is obviously the mid lane because it's got more engage power. But again, we don't know where the junglers are, so that's where everyone's worried. The poke from Azir is just insane though. Sand Soldier poke is just fucking crazy. On win lane, win game, and no other way to take down a team like SKT. This time they see strong lanes, and there is the latitude for a Zac or a Shivana without just losing lanes and then a Shivana getting invading and never getting going. So for a time to pick Shivana, it's a pretty good one. Whether Shivana will be effective or not, that much is still to be decided. Yeah, it doesn't quite have the Blood Razor. So it finishes off the recurve bow. Finally, Shivana getting close to at least the first item spike. Shivana only wants the two items really, then the rest of it's tank. So you want Devourer and Frozen Mallet, and then everything else is just tanky. So, oh yeah, oh, before I forget, given that everything's even so far, I'll do a quick rune check. So, Unsealed Spellbook Vlad with uh, Domination, Electrocute Jarvan with Inspiration. Uh, Arcane Comet Azir with Precision. Hang on, I always get... I never remember what these look like. Lethal Tempo. I believe that's Lethal Tempo Callista with Inspiration. And Guardian Brom with Inspiration versus Summon Airy Na with the Resolve. Press the attack Shivana with inspiration. Unsealed spellbook rise with precision. No. Sorcery. Sorcery. And then Unsealed Spellbook Varus with Precision. And Aftershock Alistar with Inspiration. So the stopwatch count for those in the chat. We have one, two, three, four SKT. And one, two, three, and four for KT. Lots of fucking stopwatches today. Stopwatch life. TikTok. All right. stages of the game. Flanks passing through mid lane. Isn't spotted by the control ward. That was placed. Pawn's actually playing towards the area that Faker has vision supremacy. Yeah, but he is going to get shoved back. Pawn uses his stopwatch and gets under the turret. And that's the boring part of playing Rise. Yeet. <laughs> Literally just, he knows it's coming. SKT Gold League, GG. Like 200 gold. So yeah, he gets his ESX. And then he sees the car, the combo coming, so he literally hits both spells at the same time. Instantly. And then... Boom. And gets under the turret, that was... Swift thinking from Pawn. Even brings the minion wave back. So it's good <laughs> yeah. manners. Score, if he's face checked, can actually do insane damage. So Score's waiting. Waiting. Nice waiting. Oh, Doesn't go for it. He should have just. I really. I feel like he could have proactively done that. I like SKT is versing Ku Tiger. Hey, no hate on Ku. I liked Ku. Ku, I was a big fan of Ku. That's a goldie we all remember. Look, just please don't remind me. I'm so sad faced. I'm a huge Smeb fan. So, like, yeah. Can we not remind me about that, please? Sad face. Now, they do have the earlier push. They're happy to push in. Smite. Oh. Look at that score. So much better. You get that auto attack reset. He can pick up the smites like nobody's business. I mean, on this day, two out of two reward. But the fact that score is smiting it gets almost no value from blue bar. Yeah, Frost Queen's claim. Just going to scope out where everyone is on the side of Vladimir now. Smith has gone around a lot of teams, though. Yeah, Look. No half true, it's only full not entirely. He stayed in Tigers for what, two seasons? 
That's pretty good in uh, in retrospect. Before that, it was uh, I am. So he's only done the two teams, and now he's at KT. Having vision available around the dragon, certainly a good idea when there is a dragon on the enemy team. Or appropriate. Nice control ward on the enemy red buff. They're hoping won't be scouted. So vision game is thoroughly like. Look at these two wards. SKT's vision game is all for top side. Same with KT. Because, unfortunately, Windrake just means you don't have any reason to be bot side. Considering Hooney's one-season transfer to Fnatic... Look, can we just not talk about Hooney? Guy is literally the biggest, like, flop I have ever seen. Imagine having, like, a good season only because it's EU and then getting completely found out every season afterwards. actually onto the rift herald just one of the few places they can't see so now where score is he's ruining the jungle so okay to score is literally just trying to screw with the jungle of blank now because he knows he's on the other side that was the one that both darian and also diamond props were using i liked the bone one a little bit more i like the bone one of course both of them looking brilliant okay we're in prison down on the faker but Here's the thing you got to be aware of as a Rise player, right? Unless you have your, if you don't have the shield up, you actually will not get a good trade against Azir ever. Press the attack is just insane on Shivana. I'm not going to lie to you. Greg's JG game. I'm going to try emulate the dude from the WA school team. Hey, look, he did okay. Just built fucking bad. Do a whole bunch of work taking down this Rift Herald as well. Blood Rays is completed. You can see Scores damage has sort of exploded at this stage. Once you grab that first jungle item, and you were talking about having. That's what you ought to be aware. The actual amount of priority that SKT put on the Wind Drake is actually stupid. I want to try the build. What I'm trying to remember. Don't even. Just don't. I'm not even telling you the build. I don't even want the extra view on my video of you going back to find it because it's for that purpose. I'm actually so sad that you would actually watch the video to go back and check. You're hurting my soul. Merxay's in the chat, yeah, yeet. How you doing, man? Martha and Gorilla probably most known for their abilities to get around. It's solid. Arctic Gragas, oh yeah. Sort of share that yeah, yeah. I like it. Looks alright. It doesn't suit Gragas though. Like how's a fat man gonna do Arctic Ops? Certainly knowing where to be at the right time. I mean, we what is he the sacrificial carcass for everyone to eat? When they get frozen up. Want a Windrake of my own. I'm going to keep a Windrake in the backyard. So you can not kill it and just watch it. Another stagnant early game in Korea. Much better than the Clown Fiestas you expect in NA. Play Mord. Hey! Mord's great. I love Mord. Like the scene in Star Wars, just hide and go. <laughs> oh. Why do y'all make me picture this weird shit? You're strange, man. Crazy. So, let's just draw attention to this, right? Faker's lead is literally not even 20 CS at this point. Considering all of the pain he has tried to put down onto, onto Rise early, this is a lot less than I was expecting. I, I was You'd be expecting a bigger gold lead, but Pawn is just holding out really well. Yeah, but I, when I said not kill, I figured you hadn't actually heard that at the time. So I was like, wait a minute, he was, said something rude, like you never kill Drakes. But yeah, that makes sense. But I don't want to kill the Drake. 
I don't need a ghost that only lasts two seconds and doesn't hit anything. Ugh. Well, at least you find, like, actual use out of that Drake, anyway. But yeah, CS-wise, everything else is pretty much even, but then you look at the junglers, and it's just like, oh, it's some shit. 115 to 84, like, big, big, big difference. Leave Windrag for at least 20 minutes. Yeah, basically. I'll play Soul, so I am one. Oh, yeah, that works. I'll play Lee Sin Dragon Fist. Hey. I am the dragon. I am the dragon. It does feel like Baker holds all the trump cards. Two persistent damage threats between the Azir. Plus, then honestly, Vladimir, once he gets five points into Tides of Blood, also falls in that category. So, blue buff reset onto your boy Pawn. The Rift Herald's still sitting on uh, on the Shivana as well. Biggest issue with still holding the Rift Herald, though, is you can't drop wards or lenses down, so you're kind of stuck. Don't play Shiv, she can't fly. Imagine if she could, though. Imagine if the dragon form actually flew. Actually, legendary skin idea? Or ultimate skin idea? She, like, progressively starts getting through and then starts flying? Eh? 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 She gets that, like, Alex Strasser esque like, big-time movement. Oh my god, they're really committing to this. Bro, what a commit! Holy shit! Waste his time 2018 with your boys KT. They trade literally two turrets for the teleport and one turret on the side of SKT. That is a huge play from KT. Was such an insane committal from uh from them as well. It's crazy. Dude, if Rise is pushing into you this hard. Oh god, they're all the way down after him too. They're just going to collapse onto him. As it, you know, I don't understand why Faker didn't actually think that that was coming. Like, why the hell did he not, like... Like, you knew that they took that entire top side. You could see Ryze literally running at you. Like, would you not put two and two together? Faker, like, literally feeling himself at this point. The chivalry's here. Chivalry? The cavalry. Yeah. Cheers, love! <laughs> that actually hurt to do. Never, never let me do that again. But yeah, Blank, Blank makes it in late as well. This is really scary if you're an SKT fan. KT are playing like they know exactly what their comp needs to do. Yeah, chasing the Jarvan out of the jungle as they rotate members around. This is Rotation's pretty much spot on from uh, KT as well. I'm still extremely mad about Faker staying that and staying and taking that fight in mid. That's just insane. Like Faker deserves a roasting from that one. On this bottom side, we've got a minute before the Ocean Drake comes up. We'll then SKT looking like season four all over again. And Pawn, oh, he's even going to be able to get out when Blank finds him shopping. Sleeping Giants, both KT and SKT after two games. We weren't sure about the strength of either. Yeah. We still are not 100% convinced by KT. There's only moments in their first two sets. Oh no, the gold lead. Someone do something about the gold lead. Think of the children. Think of the SKT children. Being afraid of the gold lead. Combo working out for them, but none of 
of the bait is being taken. Still very much even CS across the board. Top lane and jungle are the big discrepancies, but even then, the top lane discrepancy is 20, 20 uh, now 30 odd. But the big difference is the jungle, dude. 50, 50 difference. That's huge. Because he's been able to get into the enemy jungle as well and just pa power out through it. Semi remotely worth jung uh, dragon to take. Oh, well, Mardu's going to be able to get in here. Dragon's Descent comes down, so score. Massive in the front line. Good disengage. Oh, yeah, other reason they pick Kalista, be, uh, because they can drag effort out of stupid fights that he's about to get into. Doesn't have his ultimate either. Draw out the ultimate from Shivana, who already hit her items very early. So, Dragon not being available is another team fight tool that KT are denied. Now, SKT are going to keep cutting between threatening the mid lane and threatening this Drake. And they know that at least one big tour, and even the Varus ultimate as well. No, Varus, no. Oh, that was almost the Deft special with a potential face check. A lot of vision being available here as Deft standing in the back line, SKT regrouping. The thing that I absolutely love about this opportunity, if we do have an opportunity to talk about it, is the fact that if SKT try to deny this dragon, it's going to be so easy for that Realm Warp to be used and the Baron to be obliterated by KT if they have the correct vision and the correct information on the side of KT. Really big fight for effort. He desperately wants vision. And that crevice towards, they see Rise on the top side as well. That means SKT know it's a 5v4 for now. Yep, they're looking to start Did he not kill that ward off, off when he walked over? Smed's able to do. Able to buy some space. Oh, the flash, not quite enough. Ember's divide will mean that Pawn's going to be in trouble. Oh, no Pawn just watch. definitely no risked that at the worst time. Locks down depth, and this is the SKT. Oh, that was such a risk. That was so stupid. And this could mean Baron. Yeah, they're gonna definitely turn on to the Baron. Score is still alive, but with no flash, does have the ultimate available. That was bad. Let's just go back. On the top side as well. So they spot Rise. He walks through two wards to get into mid. They know that he's separated, and instead of just like taking the safe route, Pawn decides to come forwards in the hopes that he can actually do the fight. I don't know why he thinks this is a good idea. He honestly like is too big for his britches here. Like, look where. Look where, uh, fucking, uh, Shivana and I believe that's, nah, they're both, uh, they're both over there, because that's Alistair above them, so yeah, they're both over there. Oh, the flash, not quite enough, Embridge's Divide will mean that Pawn's gonna be in trouble, no more Snopwatch, no more opportunities, Hemoplague locks down Deft, and this is the SKT. That was not a good fight at all for KT, they did not even, they should not have come even remotely forward at all. Definitely turn on to the Baron, score is still alive, but with no flash, does have the ultimate available. They're turning on to that objective, waiting for that KT mistake. We see it there. They were spread too thin, trying too many different ideas for a... They were very spread out, and they just didn't actually stay together for that. That was very sad. So they're going to trade the dragon for the Baron. Not a good... Not a good idea. I mean, they kind of have to, because there's no there's no way they can beat the the Rend, but... talking about KT as far as having the options. Wasn't the case. KT walked into their trap, and of course, it's the man in the mid lane for SKT that set it all up. The Emperor's Divide, even a flash, couldn't get Very the sad out fight. Remember that Ryze was seen topside, went into mid, they collapsed on Ryze. Shivana he even wastes his flash trying to get out of it. He should have just flashed backwards, it would have been so much safer. By backwards, I mean like back over the thing. Infernal should go to SKT. Infernal. With ultimate, doesn't matter, dies as well. It wasn't a huge invitation like we've seen from KT in the past, or even in their past two best of threes, but a big enough one anyway. Oh, is in the next one's Infernal? I didn't even see the symbol. Oh, it's up the top left. Fuck, I'm an idiot. I didn't even realize that was actually showing on the map so early. What the fuck? Has that always been there? A 1 2 1 setup with blank floating. This seems to be some sort of the option. Does allow them to get the map control. They've kind of been denied ever since they took the downward trade and gave up the two turrets in the top lane. Doesn't mean that they have to respect effort though, as Smets can keep walking up. Yeah, Fang is going to be here, so maybe a little bit, but all oh, this could be the face check in trouble. Thankfully, the blast cone's there. And the blast cone accidentally puts him behind the wall, feels bad. Starts the onslaught of the Don't you smile at me, Rez. I'm onto you and your series. cheeky shit. Definitely not going to be an inhibitor breaking Baron, but it's going to be a map control and also turret equalizing Baron. All that SKT is looking for. They needed that Baron desperately. The 
foothold back in the game. Now they're looking stronger. We saw Blank having coverage with Baker taking the top lane turret. Hasn't been able to get near it because of all the previous damage in the top lane. And mid lane's also going to go down. Yep. Could be an easy outer ring being taken. Not sure whether they're going to be able to definitely grab these inner turrets. I think they should put your stop in mid and get out of inner turret and rotate the dragon. It's a while before dragon. Just saying. It's like five minutes before dragon. About three, four, about four minutes before Dragon. They won't have Baron up to sort it out. They will, they'd rather just take the turrets and then do the setup for Dragon. You can see Pawn actually sold his broken stopwatch as well. So no Zonyas to be coming from that particular Fiendish Codex. Slow on to score as well. It's really hard to get on top. But the Ghost is actually drawn out. But that does spell the end of the inner turret in the mid lane. Big Baron buff power play when it comes to gold. We'll not break the base, but next time... Yeah, set up. They wouldn't be able to take... Like, they wouldn't be able to take it fast enough just from everything that's there. Such a big tempo swing we've seen in this game. Items looking strong. But they got the mid in on. They don't have the wave pos uh, positioning to take top. Vladimir also showing good presence in the bot side. After being able to get into the back... Yeah, until it's bubble, Vlad is just going to lead him to roam around the map now with... Uh, with his stuff. But... Smeb has the tally, so he has the split push potential. Yeah, exactly. But the time you mentioned it, it was there was about a minute and a half left on Baron, meaning there still would have been like it's six minutes between dragons, by the way. And uh, yeah, it would have still been like up to about four or five minutes left before the next uh, dragon was up. Those two items that you need and the QSS that Callista's absolutely love. He's in a great Yes. Place. SKT's team fight is much more of a no. Hey, I corrected myself afterwards, that's why I said it twice. No hate. No hate. If a fight just starts with score jumping in, Azir Callista Vladimir can play front to back and obliterate a front line very, very well. Best way to deal with Dodge that. that. Gets a bit stuck. A pick, we might have seen a pick here. Yep, teleport does come in. Good flash. Gets out of the way of the headbutt for Blank. They do get the summon a spell. Honestly, I feel like my delay is longer on stream than some other streamers that I've watched. He's not in any trouble, but Thal doesn't have teleport. He's got the ghost on the bottom side with his spell book. And he's going to look to push this one out. Means that KT has the man advantage, but not the confidence to try and... Take on SKT. Yeah, the man advantage doesn't mean anything when you've only blown one flash. That's on the Jarvan who can still face check and flag and drag away. And always back. No, I don't. Teleport, swap it out for Ghost. Not just the flexibility of the unsealed spellbook. At least there shouldn't be. Unless one of my updates turned it on by default, but it shouldn't be. That's very scary. It would be an obs for the delay, right? Early game looks so, so good. KT trying something new, giving score all of the space, making sure that the lane... No, stream delays off. Themselves. That one and... That one juggle around the yeah, I don't think there is one on Twitch, so there's no other option for it. Yeah, I did the obs one. It's not there. Brain lag. <laughs> Definitely me. 100% brain lag. I am the brain lag. Yeah, for SKT now, this is all about just them just strangling out every advantage by just keeping rotation around the map. The Dragon's up in a minute. Baron's up in two. All they have to do is just keep the separation between both sides there. Oh, dear. I remember seeing this play at the end of, and I wanted to, refu I wanted to review this. This is a... Huge play. It's not. It's not that they wanted to fight. They just didn't have a choice because of the Java Nolt. So the Java Nolt has put them both. Hit. What the hell? Java Nolt has put them both there. And then you want you use the Shivana to try and get inside and just like tear up the tear up the Java so that there's less problems there. Alistair tries to st uh, uses his ulti and tries to cut off the engage where possible but Brahms ulti plus everything going on there and the stopwatch keeps Jarvan alive there so Thal can just run straight in pop all of his stuff and not even care they were fine if it was just Jarvan but the problem is everything else coming out after that is the issue like yeah like Jarvan, Jarvan gets the perfect flank here because he's just running off from the side 
But they've got like a relatively good position to stand back. It's not an issue. But the fact is everyone else literally just flashes in and gets the stuff. Like the, the flash, the flash has come out from all of SKT's players. Literally all of them. The only thing missing here is the headbutt from Ali, I guess, but he does make the, the alright secondary play, which is stun everyone else down, but yeah, this just ends in them getting absolutely shoved on. Still looking so, so dire and blank. Unfortunately, with the angle, with the angle Alistair's on, unless he does it here, he ends up getting screwed up and trying to headbutt him away. Because if he headbutts him any forward, like he goes through the queue and it misses. There's the KT I know and love. <laughs> Literally everyone saying the same thing. I will not get excited for KT. I will not get excited for KT. <laughs> Hashtag Monte Cristo love. Oh dear. So yeah, that's how that fight goes. So now the resets come up. The dragon is gone. It's been taken. And there's another Infernal Drake coming up again. Which is crazy. Unfortunately, yeah, score is in absolute no man's land and gets taken down. Gonna finally use the stopwatch and gets a little bit angry, but you can understand why. He's going to the death chamber, four versus five, as SKT follows some super creeps towards. Always be a KT fan, underdog special. Look, my heart definitely does go out to KT because they can't, after all the years they've been playing, you'd think they'd finally get a chance to secure one, but it just does not happen. This is such a bleed out of players here. Leads to them just taking up the base. Like KT just bleeding out, man. It's a horrible, horrible fight. Here they just take Baron, and that's basically that entire game for them. Underdog special is probably the best way to put it, though, now that I think about it. All the years that, like, KT have attempted to come back into these games. Yeah, this is a very tough moment for your boys at KT. No chance of them actually winning this fight. They're just going to get, they're just going to end up getting steamrolled here. It's a bit shit. Remember that KT get to move back to the blue side, which has been somewhat of a power play. But a ghost is coming out somewhere. It was actually flashed from Marty used Pawn having to use the ghost. Still able to move pretty quickly, but now that suffocation it's that full power skt knocking on your door super creep i don't know what happens kt just has their weird habit of putting themselves in losing positions when they have leads or even breaking even it's because against skt you kind of have to like you get to that point where you sort of have to take a risk and it's just it's just how their coaches like always got to that point they just try and like get them to accentuate on those leads Whereas SKT are built around the premise that if you can't 100% that fight, it's not worth taking. So they just wait and farm. And it's put everyone on the on the back foot for so many years because that's just how they've worked and functioned.
still comes rolling. That means that guys. I mean, the Azir, like you say, is still a Okay, so final round. We're on the blue side of the goal. Bands being Rise, Siva, and Zoe versus the Cogmore Sejuani Galio. So they don't even want to risk that game one team comp. So KT take the Ezreal because it's fucking Ezreal and he was amazing at that point in time. And SKT take Vladimir and Jarvan so they can actually run the same comp again almost to the T. So KT take the Azir away from Faker so that they can't create that massive like wall against them. They take Calm Kench for the safety against uh, against the Wombo as well, so that makes it really easy for Ezreal to be safe. It's like a hyper safety lane, no matter what. SKT take Kalista because they want the, they really want the um, uh, objective advantage there. It's one of the, the greatest things about them. Unfortunately, Mayhem is frozen, so I'm waiting for it to catch up. Please, no hate. How are we all doing, by the way? We feeling good? Did all my shit just break? Can you all hear me still? My video is not working. To be honest, LCK is a snooze fest. If you want to watch it for the technical players, sure. You can jump on the LCK KR China scene. But you want cheese and enjoy yourself, you can go to ESPN or the EUNA. Most competitive is pretty much Osolik. <laughs> yeah, look, it's a bit awkward. Okay, so I can be heard. I just can't seem to get the video to work. So, where's my video? I'll just put the video back in. It works. Oh, hang on. Got to go back a little bit. Actually, you know what? Screw it. We'll just go. From here, we'll just go from the game start so that it doesn't break mayhem any longer. The Twitch boot camps, fucking amazing. Yeah, look, they were pretty cool. Like, all that stuff in the come up was like really, really useful for that. It was really good. I don't remember the, the team comps. This is two team fight compositions, so butting heads. Not this time do we see the teams with different identities. From game two. Both of them wanting to gun for about similar timings of where they want to fight. I want to see score. Be really creative with the jungle jacks. The ability to pass, the ability to gank for... Even for the challenge of master streams are fun. Yeah, look, those are really good for those sorts of things. I'm, I guess I'm just... What I'm trying to showcase here is just like... All tiers of gameplay and like how to like break through those barriers, I guess. Does that help? I don't know. I'm just doing my thing. I'm just doing what I love, really. Shivana definitely was on KT side, not SKT side. So Vladimir instead of Shivana. Yeah. Regardless of whether it was a game one or a game two victory for KT, it was always a game three victory for SK Telecom T1. Ezra was banned game two. It was Varus. Varus, Alistar, and then game three. Even when it was a 3-0 sweep, things like 
get to number three. KT doesn't really know what to do. But there is a number that changed. KT. It is 2018. This yeah. is the chance for them to remove the shackles of the KT almost mandate. Did not make it work with what was deemed a super team at the start of 2017. So they flex picked the Vladimir to take the on top. They take on with Unsealed Spellbook just to really start this off. Let's go for that speedy fucking start, dude. That's fine. <laughs> it just gets weird when you type it like, hang on a second. This person was in the wrong spot. Very much saying that he needs to stand up and be counted. Don't think he covered himself in glory with the series so far. Now it's a chance. Well, Def, he's got the pulse fire Ezreal. We'll see whether his Ezreal is going to be able to stand up to Bangs Callista. The Varus was not enough. And this is Bangs Callista. Okay, got those sorted out. This is in the game. So early game was the same. They just uh, they just scrimmage lined and then went for the fast red start for the unsealed spellbook on. So I'm going to quickly start this up now. So on the side on KT side, the runes are aftershock inspiration. Then press the attack inspiration. So yeah, Maokai with aftershock inspiration. Jax with press the attack inspiration. Kalala. Azir with arcane comet and press. Ezra with kleptomaniac and uh, kleptomancy rather and uh, sorcery and Tom Kench with guardian and inspiration the side of SKT unsealed spellbook on with precision oh no wait that's sorcery I swear I'm going to screw that up way too often um Okay, so Unsealed Spellbook on with Sorcery. Electrocute Jarvan 4 with Inspiration. Unsealed Spellbook Vladimir with Sorcery. Unsealed Spellbook Callista with Precision. And Guardian... Sorry. Guardian Brahm with Inspiration. So the amount of stopwatches on either side. We have zero... Wait. We have one on the side of KT. And we have one, two, three on the side of SKT. So SKT just navigate Callista comps. Round bang so beautifully well. Until it's Bellbook Callista though. That's a fucking that's a strange one, eh? On both sides, and then pawn and death. So yeah, they flex pick the Vladimir to, and then can unlock and then they unlock the Orn to figure out which side they want to actually go ahead and do the counter pick against and so on. Blood Razor and the oh, Trinity yes, Force, but true. we're in competitive play, so heavily expecting this to be the Tank Jungle Jacks debuted by Ever 8 winners Malrung, which is basically going full tank. You know, Righteous Glory might be thrown in there, Cinder Hulk as a start. The thing that it does provide is from level 3 onwards, with a ward, you can ward, jump, flash. You have very long engage range and a counter strike, that AoE CC. You can gank mid from directions that only really Rek'Sai and Shaco can because of your flexibility. So there's a lot of options to gank as the Jungle Jacks and you have decent base damage just with your passive attack speed and also your ultimate providing you with auto attack reset damage. So this is the part where Jungle Jacks comes most online. A huge level three power spike above many, many other junglers. A good vision from SKT and a control ward also Jungle Jax has always had the really good like ability and base damages to do so. He's just always lacked the ability to farm and scale with anyone else. So using him as a tank jungler is really just about being able to line line up your your CC and just going from there. Obviously he has shitloads of mobility given that he is, you know in his in this position with Tracker's knife and so on. It's just would you often want to use it just given the state of like what Jax is and wants to do? And I guess like the aim is like if you it's it scales better than Lee Sin does, and it has really good like mobility, so it's worth it. This is the caddy. Feels bad, man. Feels fucking bad, man. Here we go. Well back, just waiting to pick up this mini wave as he heads under. Score moving over once another rift scuttler. 
But yeah, the stun being really good on the on the scuttle camp as well makes it really easy to take. Plus the one thing that everyone's really aware of with Unsealed Spellbook is the reduced summon a spell cooldown. Like you cannot sleep on that at all. It's just insane how much like freedom it gives. Unsealed Spellbook just giving all that opportunity out just makes fights happen so much faster and harder too. Because having that available to you is just crazy. What I would like to see is LCS VOD where you could spectate mode would be juicy. Yeah, look, it'd be fucking amazing, personally. Fortunately, not having access to tournament mode from from a remote location would be a bit of a would be the problem. Can't actually get into the client from here. They run the whole thing off the LAN so that there's no lag. Yeah, thirty percent plus the because of the cosmic insight. Yeah, it's fucking huge, dude. 25 from Unsealed Spellbook itself, and then 5% from that. So, a third off the cooldown. That's what? About a minute and a bit off? A minute and a half off? Yeah, looking for the roam. Gets spotted on a ward though. Realizes it, I think. Yeah. Oh yeah, the other thing that was really good about Kleptomancy was that you could vendor the stuff you actually just got. So it was kind of useful to just vendor the stuff back. Teleport on low cooldown. Yeah, look. I'd honestly consider it on Olaf, but just so you can move around the map a lot better. Like, some of the heroes that were much more, like, summon a spell dependent have just, ever just, like, surged back into meta. Like, Ryze being in that position, who, like, thoroughly wants Ghost and Flash up almost every fight, no matter what, so that he can maneuver around fights really easily. Cassiopeia as well, but wouldn't, you wouldn't use, like, that sort of spell on it, mainly. I love is like Darius though, he's TP ganks at air. I mean, in all honesty, I'd want I'd want to go Ghost Flash on Olaf late game. That's my point. I'd want to switch in and out of taking away the teleport and just going Ghost Flash so I can actually get into fights and just actually like start mauling down on people because that's kind of the biggest thing. That's what you want to do it on Darius as well. Like you don't want to worry about TP ganks. You just want to use that when you split pushing or early game to get back to lane. But mid game, you want to actually start running around with your team and like putting all this pain down, and that's what you really want to do. Exactly. That's the point. So you want to take Ghost Flash and be like, oh my god, like I'm gonna fucking just run into someone, and then if they flash away, you can actually flash over the wall after them. You don't have to worry about that shit. And that's like the big thing, man. Like I really, I'm really like mad about being in that position where it's like, oh my god, I really want to be like on top of somebody. So the score's going to go for the solo. He can jump out with if he needs to, so it's not really a problem there. Score gets it, but he, he used the leap strike to get the track and it feels bad. Basically, battle warding against the Jacks for a little while now. Yeah. 
Make it not too worried here in the mid lane to be going down to half. But yeah, any talk about the, the Frost Fang, the Frost Queen's claim in this is uh, completely moot because it's been removed in uh, 8.2. So don't don't ask me any questions about that. It's completely pointless. Um, the... Exclusive build for Vladimir. My first thought is oh, yes, man. because on 8.2 the quest is removed and a sight stone is added. Could just mean we become, we become League of Vision and then maybe we'll see even less kills. So I guess that could happen, but I'm going to go glass half full and assume that we'll move away from the GP10 on most of the laners. Possibly even some of the junglers as well. I feel like that quest was working pretty well for the likes of the Skarners, things like that. But maybe you can go for a Frostfang early as Nidalee, and then just get a Red Smite rather than a Green yeah, Smite. Yeah, Challenging Smite will work on that. So for junglers, I think there's some latitude, but for laners, it's a little bit less attractive. Uh, even Chilling Smite as well. I mean, I guess that's yeah. theoretically the same maneuver. Baker continuing to be aggressive. But yeah, I had the same idea as the other night when I was thinking okay, about it. Like, if you take... Um, if you still go for the items to still get the, the quests done, the main thing you want to do is obviously, um, think more about vision game, but still getting the GP10 as a jungler because you still want the, like, the amount of money from that. But you wouldn't take it as a lander anymore because the penalties are just huge. Yeah, and as your mana sustain is actually going to be pretty huge. Very hard to chunk out, not expecting too much attention from Jarvan and Orin in the laning phase bot side, so mid lane. Yeah, Baker's getting frisky. Hemo plate goes down, Baker actually wants it, grabs a whole bunch of health back, but in goes score. So yeah, wasted ult from Faker. Doesn't really, like, go for it. I guess he's just kind of expecting Pawn to run away, but the problem is he's just getting shoved in too hard, and that's kind of what he wants. He wants to go home, he wants to be able to buy. Or rather, he wants to try and drive Pawn back to his tower so that he can actually lose, like, minions. Adjustments towards some of those utility runes, given that inspiration has been so dominating as a tree so far. Not in 8.2, those notes online, but not going to be seen in live for a little while. Sorry, competitive for a while. Nice invade from SKT, playing around their pushing lanes, and also the fact that Azir was pushed out. Can't take back the blue, but unfortunate. Blank using the advantage of sending Azir home to know that the blue timing won't be a thing, so he just runs and takes it. about some more laning Atlas? Yeah, I love laning. I'm a big fan. Good news. We have plenty <laughs> of laning. We do have Infernal into Infernal though, so that's a bit of hot fire that might be fun to watch. With all the excitement that we The Infernal Drakes are probably one of the main things that steer the course of this game because the two come up two coming up at the beginning of the game and score taking the first one definitely makes that an easier way to go. I believe they go for the early rift herald just so that they can do the spacing. They had his ear to guide him over towards it, but I don't think... I think because of the control were being behind the Rift Herald, it would take too long to actually worry about taking it so they don't bother. So Faker's now got enough CDR to literally just spam all over... Um, all over Azir. So he's just forming out, forming, like falling behind in CS and such. See the ultra late game team fights. It's hard to see SKT losing them. They have so many tools, but yeah, he does the all in in order to try and sort that out. And again, it's just there's no thought in Baker's mind that he'll get a solo kill. But if he can get a summoner, if he can get lane control, that's enough. He just wants to more than anything else just consistently drive all made out. Yeah. So they they collapse onto. The po the, they were out of order with their with their ideas here. Like so, Cor Score goes to try and fight in mid, realizes he's kind of misdone that, and then instead of uh, instead of just like kind of letting that slide, the bot lane were actually on the way to do the rotate for the four man gank, and just they like, they just completely screw that up too. But he's got the freedom now. Faker's in that position where he's actually able to just keep driving down the lane, which is good for SKT and their positioning. But again, like Score is just continuously out farming Blank at every turn because he's just capable of taking his winnings and he's just out moving, maneuvering him on the map too. Yeah, 
exactly what we wanted in a game number three. I know it may not necessarily be a whole lot of action, but what we want is these teams to be playing on a similar level. And it looks right now in every single lane, everything's going the same way. So if Faker goes home, grabs his revolver, and SKT are trying to go for the early aggro, but of course there's a ward baited on the opposite side, so they're definitely able to do this. But yeah, both of them end up cancelling because they can't actually commit to the fight, so Mata calls it off. Was really smart from SKT. Bang saw that Deft, who of course had not shopped, was low on mana. They instantly old in onto Mata. Weren't able to get the kill, but get exhaust out of it. Just a lot of like little attrition battles that are going on here, and it's not really making the massive amounts of difference yet, but you can only hope that it's going to factor in. But yeah, they get the they end up taking the Infernal Drake on that side because there's no way that they can actually stop them. Can't can't stop the Callista, honestly. But I believe they would have figured that one out anyway. Man immune completed. Got some free ass boots there in his back pocket as well. Four out of five. Man, thrift shopping on the side of KT. Bit of extra power, but when it comes to gold, only 200 gold is the lead for KT Rolston. No control of mid lane for Pawn in a good matchup. Trying something now, but Faker just ults. Ultimate hat proc. Yeah. Oh, that timing was oh. stunning. Just predicting exactly when the Empress divides. There's a, sol a solid fight so going out between the two of them. Heel actually baited Faker in there as Bond. He heel baits Faker, and now Faker's in a lot of trouble. Pull to come back off cooldown. Will he have it? No, not going to get checked. You waste his stopwatch out of fear as well. Have that option. Twenty percent CDR. But yeah. Thirty percent already built up. So. Oh. Styling a pawn pawn in that regard. Trading up in summoners, getting also the jungler's flash. Faker did it in game two. He's trying to do it here in game three. Outclassing Pawn one more time. Keep pushing into mid. Like there was a time when Pawn was all over KT, uh, all over Faker, like a cheap suit. And now, it, in this particular game, it's just turning into Faker just constantly trying to like put the shovel on him, put the screws on him to keep him back. But yeah, like. The amount of money and the amount of just sustain that Faker has right now is crazy. One thing about Ornolt is that it's very telegraphed if you're on the wrong side. Icebawn Gauntlet, probably just going to be frozen heart here as the trades get stronger and stronger from SKT in the bot side. Yeah, True Shot Barrage flies forward. Use there for able to actually use the True Shot Barrage to get through it. Standing on the ward and Faker gets done. Faker caught shopping two weeks in a row. Exactly, he got caught by the Orbital Strike Redemption and then once again does all the hard work and predictably it's only in the trivialities that and then I just want you to be aware right I don't see why there's no reason right if you're Elena you would never back here unless you were 100% sure that there were no wards I, I never risk it I always try to back near the tower just for safety like against the vision there, it's always been very unsafe, and this is why it happens. Faker caught shopping two weeks in a row. Exactly, he got caught by the orbital strike redemption, and then one. I also don't get why. I don't think Paul needed to ult there personally. It's only in the but, yeah. trivialities that Faker is tripped up upon. But then again, they, we just wanted to beat out the the W, so no real reason not to just try and burst him down. It's the first feel good moment for KT since we spawned. That's a disaster, though. You can't be feeling great. Proto belt's now completed. Not going to mean that he's going to have any less control of the area, but Pawn gifted 300 gold for nothing. Baker was deciding between lots of lovely options for Vladimir, then he was dead. Yeah. And uh, all too easy. I'm not able to grab that. And that was first blood as well, so make that 400 gold. And this is something so that... Uh, really, really good money. Ball, but Baker traditionally has not found success on the Vlad. I remember many Vlad games he's played in good matchups. And what I found with How are we Vladimir feeling in the chat? It's very quiet. Normally when you see Faker, you see Faker. Not, I'm not used to it being this quiet, even even with the low viewer numbers. Legendary. I've seen him get roamed you're all, you're all busy. times as Vladimir. Not as relevant with Hard the workers. Wait, it's out of that shit. <laughs> second to a lot of fights as Vladimir that a Ghost Flash user shouldn't be. So historically not a great pick. 
Still a good start here. Still a fantastic laning phase. But Faker's build is 100% capable of taking one target down. No problem there at all. But if he doesn't like get into that position where he's able to take people down, he's going to end up in a position where like he'll have to overexert for each play. And this is what ends up screwing with Faker as the as the games pass. But yeah, both lanes are basically just being boring as hell at this point in time. So there's no reason for like bot lane to even worry about the fights. They will try to it. They will attempt to go for it, but it's not like either side's capable of staying ahead. Collapses onto him. But again, the bait. The bait's very unfortunate too. Let's just see how this why this fight goes awry. So hang on. The position here is that you've got the jungler and the and the mid laner able to converge onto Faker, which makes it very easy for for them to go for this play. But what they're not aware of is that they've got Jarvan just below. And they only just figured this out when it's a little bit late. But then, yeah, Orn just says, fuck it, I'm just going to go in anywhere to try and stop this. Jarvan's ulti going through Emperor's Divide is the feels good man. So they try and get out. They use the Orn ult to collapse him, but he just gets the stopwatch instead. But yeah, can't get out of it from there. Man in the mid lane gets some revenge. Yeah, Faker had the latitude to go forward. I see if there's enough damage here from Spam. You'd think not. On the Maokai, it looked like Faker was out of position, but the first collapse happened. That's why he was pushed up. First turret of the game, first brick in the mid lane is even. So they get the turret down team. off the back of that Maybe play because they were capable of ago. being aggressive yeah, and having that aggressive point. position. It's very good. Very good, very good, very good. I mean, that was just first blood going down. That was the only thing that came in. But yeah, the teleport gank is the main changer here because it just scares him to run off. And Maokai just doesn't get down in time. He just cancels it and leaves. That's like twice that Smev has done that overall. And it's been a bit of a problem because they're just not well... Uh, they're not matching. Or by the way, or they're matching in the sense that like it's not enough for Smev to to make it, make the play out of it. Compared to one and a half from the side of KT. That's what happens when you have Chiki Tan rolling. Yeah. And the Zonyas plus Proto Belt are both of the extra boxes that have Vladimir desperately wants as quickly as possible. Thank you very much, Stopwatch. But that's a one use thing. Now he's just got it a minute or so cooldown. He'll belt him forward again. But yeah, he'll just belt forward just to get the free poke. He doesn't even have to hit him with a missile. He'll just keep doing it. Just for the sake of the fact that it just creates free poke. And it, it's just a, a stronger all-in power. Exactly what he's gonna do right now. Infernal Drake's up again, so we've got another Infernal Drake. This is like just getting out of control, damage-wise. Smev's here. Drops the ulti. Ram goes in there as well, but they lose Marta instantly off the fight. The damage is going to be dished out here, which is where it gets very good for, for KT, because now they can split off enemies. And they start re-engaging to try and sort this out, but again, scores damage is not as high as you'd want it to be. The pawn goes in a bit way too far, uses the divide to separate him, but again, Vegas too far forward. And everyone just starts flashing on to complete these kills. Use the ulti, kills Blank. He gets the blue buff off the back of that fight too, so that's really huge for Deft. Deft is capable of doing much more perk now because he's got that blue buff. He needs that to like sustain, and it's going to lead to them killing Faker. Bit of a botched team fight there from KT. If you watch the bottom side of it, Smeb was happy feeding left and right. Wasn't ever actually able to get in. So 
wasn't really a factor I think I think Smep's fear of getting into that fight was slightly justified because he wanted a good angle for his ulti and it does do the job but again like as you were being way too low in mana was definitely the biggest fear so he had to really choose his cues which you'll see in the replay but a moment that he gets the blue buff off of killing blank that's just freedom so pause here he, post he postures himself here, knowing that he has to get a good angle with his ulti, but he takes way too long to get into the fight off of that. That's him taking like a fair bit of time, but Marta's going to get shredded down after this point. Bang's not even contested in this fight either. Azir is up here. He's not even into this fight yet. And Ezreal is buried below the, the scoreboard here as well. So it's literally just Smep. So you can see Death there. He's only got like a fifth of mana. Marta going down. Jax is in as well now, so they finally start peeling off wherever they can. Smeb takes a lot of damage, but doesn't go down. Then he takes a nice chunk out as well, so they get like a segment of target here to push Blank out of the fight. Again, Death's mana is getting worse, as you can see. It's very low, so he's not actually able to go ahead and just pile on the damage like he normally would. So it's really just about properly picking these out. Pawn goes in to try and do these extra sand soldiers, but he comes too far forwards. And Vegas says, no, nah, hang on, I can definitely put the damage on him. So he does that there. The divide shoves out two people there and makes it very, like, makes it safer in the sa in the case of um, the rest of KT to get away. But too little too late there. And Bang just flashes over and takes the kill. Now, again, everyone on SKT is low low enough here that there is a re like a re-engage is possible. That poor, that poke, that one Q, literally. Is all he has there. Oh, well, he has blue. Did he not have blue, or is that just the effect that I'm seeing? No, it's from Klepto. Gets the Klep he, like, the Klepto that he had there just gives him the mana pot. He gives him enough mana just to go ahead and shoot that off into the into the fight. Killing killing on blank gives him the blue buff, so he is able to just go ahead and keep poking down. It just makes a very good play for him there. The Klepto mana pot is probably the funniest part there, but yeah. If Deft have all, all the mana at the beginning of that fight, easy win. That is an easy win for KT. But he just was very much mana staffed going into that fight, and he just ended up running low. Have both been around. Just think back to the mid lane Ezreal days, and that's still the story. Yep. SKT had the easy. So SKT now the Knight's Vow is out on easily. uh so blank to help Faker. With the Jarvan and the Orn, as Score finds his opposite number in the jungle. KT have a more tricky one, Atlas. They have to get out Again, of mass tools. amounts of uh farm ahead for the jungler over the over the difference there. Every other lane pretty much even. 10% 10, 10 10, 10 CS discrepancy at most. Getting control wards, getting vision supremacy is the best way for KT to win the late game. Because if they just run at each other 5v5, I think SKT wins many So Orn takes bot turret. Yeah. The, app is, the map is open out now for SKT. They have all three front turrets gone. KT don't have one yet. So they're in a very hard position to do this, but they can still try to take these fights if they like want to because the gold is not too far against them. But again, the, dis the, the problem that they're in... This is where it gets bad. This is where like the worst moment is for for KT. He's already taken too much damage as it is, but Marta can't get away with uh, because he's running too slow with Deft inside him. The moment he spits Deft out, they just instantly jump onto him to try and get that. The divide comes out too late to do anything. It's not in a good position either. Everyone else getting safe is probably the best event here, but again, there's nothing that can be done on the side of KT. They get the safety in mid lane just in case, but I think they've pretty much just given up on the Baron at this point. Yeah, remember, 26 minute Baron, not exactly the latest one in the game, so it's going down slowly. A lot of damage potential here from Pawn. They're actually going for it as Tower makes his way in. They're committing to the Baron. They get rid of. So here's the funny part here, right? 
Every single player was now indeed chunked out in the previous fight, and with Pawn standing where he is, he's to totally capable of getting good poke into this fight. So they used Dal to try and be the zoner guy to go ahead and do it, but he does it prematurely, and he gets absolutely murdered. Now, SKT figured this out and have started running. Fake is already on the way out. Like, he doesn't give a shit. He's gone. He is gone, like, gone. And here is where it only gets worse on the side of SKT. They do take the Baron, they commit to it, that's perfectly fine. But, no, sorry, for KT's sake, this actually, like, could have gone way better, but didn't, because they didn't, like, pick a proper target to kill off, so... Unfortunately, they don't get anything from it. But yeah, Smite Rend is the quintessential win for the for Baron take. Not really a problem there. Is this going on my mic? Sorry. But yeah. For the call of the Forge God. You can't get away from this unless you flash early. Didn't have flash up. Def dies with his summoners available. Too much going on there. Probably a good thing that Def held on to him because he knew he was in a lot of trouble after that fight. So from then on, you know that Deft is going to just play super safe now. He has to. He has no choice but to play super safe. But the reliability means that if you choose the right engage, he's going to go more often than not like that Atlas and SKT. Couple of team fights away. But yeah, the unfortunate thing is that now SKT have Baron. So on the side of KT, they want to actually try and just stem the, the bleeding from all the ways that are going to be shoved in. I'm surprised no one is talking and just paying attention. You're surprised. I hope everyone's just paying attention. I'm, like, I'm wondering, like, I'm nervous. I'm worried that, like, if there's no one here, they're just idling. There are less people in the chat than usual, but yeah, everyone's just kind of chilling. So. It's kind of okay. A teacher with a lot of info to take in, you are... Did you just yoda me? You yoda me. It's interesting. As long as y'all are enjoying yourselves, I'm totally okay with it, but like, I'm looking at the chat and it's blank and it scares the shit out of me. Bang, blank just taking the chunk right there. Which is already a problem for SKT. Like, if, you're, if you've got Baron and you're on the back foot already because one of you guys is getting chunked out, you're just screwed. What do you do with that? Like, no no means to go anywhere, no means to do anything. Funny joke! <laughs> oh, dear. Good odd that both of them used ult, but the cooldowns are low enough they won't have to worry about it. Spooky guys going out and finding score again as well. Just fucking listening and playing a game, haha. <laughs> fucking listening. Oh jeez, Red's getting angry, you know he's having a bad game. One on item upgraded, so it seems like Toll just want to spend 500 gold to get the improved magic resist and armor on the lock. Oh, ho, ho, ho. <laughs> oh, you don't sound happy at all. Oh, my god. So, Mountain Drake goes down on the side of next one will be Elder. But, yeah, now for SKT, the, the ability to break down things is going to be a much faster. Versus the fighting power that's available for KT as well. So, this is essentially... It's a very close game. Now the Baron buff has fallen off of SKT as well. It's very, very scary. Ask to play support and have a brain dead aid. Oh, you're on! You're in league! Oh, dear. Oh, dearie, dearie, dear. I do like the toll also. You know, I mentioned the improved locket. Note that he has a locket. Hank's getting locket ever since he got... Oh, yeah. Broken interaction, BTW. On, on buffed locket doesn't have a diminishing return if there's another locket in the game. It's only... Because it, they're counted as two different items. They're coded as two different items. So there's no diminishing returns if you use two of them. Which is just dumb, by the way. ...to help Deft and Pawn get through. Now, Pawn does have magic resist... So you can see that there are two lockets on the side of SKT because of the Orn. 
Which is about, yeah, Papa Smith is about to say about it now. In a negative way, you don't get the diminishing returns, so it's considered different items yep. by the game. So they're actually going to get full value out of two lockets, which also further explains why we saw it upgraded early by the Orc. And I know that we don't know the name of it, so I'm not actually going to talk about the, the mega locket. Name. It's Is it the locket of the gold Solari, as opposed to the iron one? Or do you want to go up one level, you know? Locket of the platinum Solari? I'm going to give you another go at this, Coke. It wasn't good. Try again. Should I wait a bit? No, just, just now. We've got nothing happening, so... What's the name of the item, Atlas? Locket of the Titanium Solari? Oh, let's give up on that. <laughs> let's get back to the game. You've got nothing to do. Locket of the Titanium Solari? Rogue. <laughs> I still don't know what your one is. Locket of, Locket of the Awesome Solari? Is that what you said? That's not I didn't right. even... I didn't have to contribute. You're not even you did all the talking for me, You're not even getting me, a Atlas. stronger metal. <sighs> Let's see. Casey just want to find a foothold here. They have no vision line to really talk up. A couple of isolated wards in there. Nothing available for the like on the map to take apart from towers for KT. And even then, they really need a means to get forward to do that. So for them, it's not a good idea. And because they're behind, really lacking in the map con uh, map control. It's really just about waiting for KSKT to do something and then catching them off guard. Marta's onto that cheeky little idea. Doesn't have to worry about it. Goldie will only grow in this scenario. Yeah. Death trying to get some poke damage. So the poke is po going to be the best thing for, for Ezreal right now because if they can actually get the pain on, it's not a problem. Unfortunately, okay, score, score manages to get out because he knows that they're on that side. Almost takes the bramble back with it. Score goes back forwards again. They're going for the knockout. The, the rap comes in from Maokai. Fortunately, Thal, uh, Tal takes down. Oh dear, this is going everywhere. Now, hang on, hang on. This, this is where we're going back. He's already used the root to hold these people down, but unfortunately, Scores just stuck in the middle of the enemy team. Can't do anything, so they sacrifice him. The mass damage coming out from Faker's Faker there, and then the charge in from Orn keeps a lot of people in check, but they can't make it to the wall in time, so they get. They can't make it over the wall. The mass... Like, so Jarvan goes for the ulti to try and lock people in. But at the same time, the Empress Divide comes out and it pushes everyone into the wall of of the of the Jarvan ult. Which means that a lot of people are starting to get chunked out really hard. And this is where the re-engage comes in. Porn starts absolutely shredding people in there. One up pawn. Can he make it a quadra? Effort in trouble. Unbreakable. It's not that unbreakable, sir. But we don't have the cooldowns. And pawns not. Effort so yeah, just keep this in mind when you watch this fight. Oh, Hang on. Look, look at that. Like the he doesn't bring down the Javan ult fast enough oh, at all, and all that damage that they take from the Empress the Vi plus the shred. It's just huge. Huge damage. And then, yeah, they just go to chase... Oops, went, hit the wrong one. So they just keep chasing him down from here. But uh, in response to that, having to send him home, they can just charge up mid and just take care of this mid turret. There's enough time for them to get the inhibitor turret as well, from what I recall. Now, prepare this. This is where the, the big brain play comes in, right? They take the tower, but they don't go for the inhib. And everyone's like, hang on a second, what, why? With Baron coming back up, they have just like beeline straight for it because there would be no one there to actually go ahead and set up on them for a fight. So all they have to do is literally just start the Baron and just start taking it down because if they get the guarantee off this, they know that Blank can't come in and charge up for this as well. 50-50 is way too much of a, of a risk, so there's no point. They just let it go. So they can take that and return in much strength and actually go ahead and start busting down lanes. So this is a bit, that's a solid call for them. So yeah, that fight looks perfectly fine, straightforward. They're all separated, but everyone else comes in. Naturally, only scores the casualty there. But again, this this is the problem here. Jarvan, Jarvan literally alters the same time Pawn does, and they just go straight into each other, and they get stuck. Them getting stuck there means they can't put any attacks onto anyone else, and they don't, it doesn't bring down the ulti. That's the thing. Like, they don't bring it down. If he doesn't bring down the Cataclysm any faster, they just get shredded so hard. Effort gets murdered. Thalg has to go down for it, and that's just the end of that fight. Everyone just gets absolutely mowed down. Had to get an ohm wreck on my ADC was though. <laughs> I 
I forgot Home Record was still in the game. Holy shit. I mean, at least you adapted. I gotta give you credit for that. At least you adapted. So it all just gets a little bit better for KT, and they've got the Baron Ball. Every SKT fan was ready to talk about the victory. But yeah, so this is where, like, KT can just keep strangling them out now. They're just going to take every single thing available to them and just gather up all the strength on one side just to keep opening this up. KT continue to push up. So here we go. So Flake, Flake is going in for the flank. He is literally 1v1 with Deft in the back. Deft is literally just being shielded up and is de dealing damage from the back here. Look at that position, man. He's just so far back. But again, they, this because of all the all the fear of being separated in that fight. Hang on. I started in V5, man. I've seen some shit. I saw all my items have bought Ohm Reckon, built full AD and altered down mid. Did that three times and closed the game solo. Support Scion. Jesus. That's a, that's an interesting one. There's some interesting games going on over there, but yeah, that's, uh, that's some shit, guys. <laughs> but yeah, because of the, them being all split off here, the fear that, like, right now, that Adept has already been chunked out immensely at the beginning of this fight, so the fear that they have of just getting collapsed on again, they just separate out. Now, Death's positioning from here on is actually pretty solid, apart from him getting hit by the, uh, the Bromolt, because he can just shoot numerous Qs across here. But the problem is, there's just that they're already, they're already too far behind. All the summoner spells and usage being coming out. There's no summoner spells apart from Jax's flash available on the side of KT. So they just sacrifice the fight. They take, they take the loss out of that and three of them go down. They try to maintain the Baron buff that they have. So they just get out as fast as they can. The exhaust being used from Orn to get into the fight. Could not fully and all this being like stuck in on that oh, like, from everyone else, the flash being used by Blank just to get at the engage. It's just fucking crazy. Spackernell's support silence. Oh, so far, that far back. Early six, I think it's been a while either way. Man, all these crazy ass plays, dude. I mean, yeah, just so much damage that he has to take from that. But yeah, SKT end up mowing down mid lane. Don't think they they don't get the inhibitor. They only get the turret, but they want to go for the Elder Drake just to shore up the. Basically, in response to KT taking the Baron, they've kind of realized that they've got to take the Orc fighting Orgwin advantage, so they just take this. There's no way that anyone can stop them taking it. Can Orn jungle? Not as good as he can top lane. He needs the, he needs the money to scale really well. He doesn't have very good attack speed in the jungle either, so he's not, it's not fast enough for him to take shit down. Not very mana, not very good on mana either. He's just really, really hard, like, he's just hard to beat in lane. So again, now with the two minute buff on, on SKT, there's no, cho no choice for KT but to stay as far back as possible and wait. Because the, their jungle is literally just being murdered by SKT. So much lifesteal on the side of Bang too. Like he's just trying to hyper sustain and stay alive and he keeps the stopwatch for the good life. Hyper defensive build now. Pawn in a game similar to this, start with the upgraded Zonias and then change it for Death Cap, knowing that his role was to need to do more damage in the late game. And the Orn Pass will be relevant in the late game, given there's 5,000 gold worth of stats that won't be available yeah. inside of KT. Death, speaking of six items, finished off his more of Malmordius. Low damage build, though, has had to go for the more of Malmordius, knowing that 
Yeah, sta standard problematic fight here. They go for the ult. And it cleans off Marta, but it's not really... It's no value from that ulti at all. It doesn't do anything. They're, just gonna, they're able to just give up the inhibitor with the zoning, but... Again, it doesn't really matter like what they do here unless they can actually get a fight off of it, and it's not worthwhile. They send Faker away. Still can't get the inhibitor because of the fear of the Azir soldiers and Poke, so they, don't have, they just leave. They just peel out and go to do something else. The buff's about to wear off, and KT are very much aware of it now, so they can go ahead and give this a shot. Interesting time in this game. So 40 minutes in, it's very, very tumultuous. Everyone's very nervous about where this is going to go because this is the this is the moment where one fight changes everything. SKT having the advantage because of the fact that um, extra late game stats from Orn's passive are just freaking huge. But again, it's going to take forever to kill a shred off half of the tank damage from there. Here they go. It all goes in now. Now this is where the fight gets insane. I have to rewind this because this is just how this is the split second that no one realizes where this fight turns around. This is how crazy it gets. So they go in for the ulti. It goes on to death. That's where they attempt to go for it. But because Def's in this position, Faker's right there. They know exactly what target they want. They want Def out of this fight, no matter what it takes. So they literally just barrage everything onto Def. And Def's HP, he goes down to a quarter instantly. He gets eaten by Mata. And then they use the wall to try and stem that. But Faker's still in this fight. He commits. He definitely wants to make sure he can do this. Def is all the way out the back here now. On less than half HP, just, because he's used his heal to survive that as well. Pawn's taken another set of damage. There's a fat shield from Iron Solari being dropped onto both of them. The Redemption gets dropped down as well. So Mardo's dropped all these abilities onto him to try and sort this out. Everyone else is just peeling out as best they can, just to make sure that they can get a good re-engage. So he scores over the wall here. Um, Smeb's still causing tr as much trouble as he can in the center of the fight, and Mata is in good kill zone, and then because of that, they finally get the moment they were waiting for and collapse onto Faker. So now, the rest of, uh, the rest of SKT are on the run, because they know that they've gone too hard now. Mata goes in hardcore with the re-engage with Smeb. They finally get right past where they need to go to get this fight to happen, but they don't get the takedown onto Bang that they were hoping for, so Thal has to actually... Yeah, so at this point in time, because Thal has to sacrifice himself, there is just trouble upon trouble here for SKT. So yeah, he, he was, they were very much prepared for that dive, thinking that they were going to kill Death, but the problem here is now that there's no one here that can actually, that can actually handle this, so they just go in, Smeb's come back with his ulti, I mean with his health back rather, the fight goes in, they just start diving onto everyone to try and kill off Bang as best they can and run this in. Finally handle the fight under the turret. They take out Bang, they take out Brom, and they take down Jalvin, and that's it. That's it right there. There's your fight. There's your final fight. 
train. It looks like it would be history. Now, do you guys want to see that fight again? Like, I'll, I will scope that fight out again for you. The previous, like, the five man that changes everything. KT underdog feels good. I mean, that's that's a big... Like, if you're a KT fan, that's a hell of a victory. And you'd hope that KT would ride it out for the rest of the year. But yeah. I'll run back this last fight again. Because it's a pretty huge fight. The fans of the losing team will at least be able to say they saw more out of their telecom team than they did in week one. Yeah. So keep in mind right now, everyone... Literally everyone in this game right now. All summoners are available from SKT. Almost everyone is six items. Except for Bang, who is about to get his sixth item. So that is running down to mid now. Again, all summoners available for SKT. All summoners available for KT. Everyone's got their summoners. This is this is a fight that you would want to take. Everyone's prepared. This is all about who really upgraded black. That was, who really wants to go for this? But again, so they take the fight early because they want to catch Deft out. They know where Deft is. They know where, like, why he's the target. But again, this is this is where the fight is. They're just blank and Faker have just seen seeing red, and they just go straight onto Deft. Most of his HP goes down. Mata clutches it by eating him. They all get out the back. They start popping all the shields and redemption down to get the safety. They get the re-engage straight on the Faker. Like, the re-engage and just locking Faker up dead set in this fight. The lockup is from the Maokai Root, Jack Stun. No, sorry, not Jack Stun, but the Maokai Root and the um, the autos from Mata into the stun. Just caking down everything you would want from there and just ripping it up. But then they, yeah, they try and force this again just to make sure they can get in. Mata, Mata is very much aware of what's happened. But in the in that first initial fight, right, all summoners have come down from Thal, all summoners from Faker, Heal gone from Bang, Ignite gone from Effort, versus both summoners down from Mata, Flash gone, Flash gone, Heal gone. So there's still some summoners left up for, for KT in this fight, regardless of how this goes. So having, having to sacrifice Orn there is a bigger problem just, just for that re-engage. But yeah, more Malmordius and the, the heal shields, etc. save Deft immensely in that fight. It's crazy. Just all that coming off is just making that whole fight almost... Almost an instant loss, but it turns into a good turnaround win. Huge play. KT pull off the highway robbery on the SKT hype train. It looks like it would be history, but we said the one thing different was the year had changed. KT Rolster never picked up a best of three with this roster in 2017. And then two team fights. I just want people to scope this out and see this. From Baker have cost two best of threes. It was the deft. Look at Deft and how sullen he is. Just because of how hard that game was. Like he is absolutely mentally exhausted from that game and like the amount of effort that that went in for and the amount like that he had to actually do with this is just crazy after some early misplays but then when it all counts turned it all around faker is pretty much beside himself where they need to be you know what the best thing is though atlas on the skt side faker had a fantastic series as he always does but yeah, Death just can't control himself. It's just a hard, hard fought win. And it's just gonna. It's just gonna kill him. Like, just being in that position. 
this screen. They've never felt this feeling as a group of five. They were put together. Because KT. SK Telecom T1. It's not the time they wanted. It's not the spring 2017 final. But it is a victory for KT Rolston. And never were there th those moments for Deft in this series as well where he gets Oof. picked off. It was him almost getting picked off in a lot of these circumstances, actually playing very reserved. Game number one is Caitlyn was uncontrollably beautiful, but crazy. game number one is where so, Jeff is able to get uh, it done. Some obvious, like it was going the same way that as KT stuck together to do. Here's scoreboard. Have, Look at that. Look at that scoreboard. Look at that damage. Look at it. Absolutely crazy. But yeah, kills were basically even. One Baron each, one Elder Drake to SKT. Everything else was about even. Whew. Absolutely crazy overall. Oh. So, overall, what we've just witnessed is essentially the pinnacle of, like, meta, like macro gameplay. Like, every single thing about that was just them attempting to get into these positions and just punishing each little mistake and just moving each little piece on the board and trying to get forwards like that. It's really hard to, to like, sort of break down each little bit and piece and analyze it. I hope that I have at least scratched the surface for you that is actually that watches this video. My man, you need a break after streaming for like five hours. Get some food and drink in here. Look, it's definitely a possibility. But I will still... Yeah, so I'll get to that in a second. Thank you, Regretful Dessert. But yeah. Uh, I hope at the very least that everyone actually learned, like, and I, I actually managed to scrape the surface in what we were trying to really analyze in regards to these types of games. Like, it's, it's really hard to really put every single bit of detail onto these types of, like of these types of matches because they're really they're really macro heavy and they're very much about trying to put a balance on like what you like what you would like what you're trying to do to get these victories right like every little bit counts like to do a full review of this kind of stuff from start to finish would take more than the amount of time that i've actually done i've taken three hours to to edit this plus the plus like the, everything that's gone on today like so I've, I've essentially been on the job for about five six hours in a row should probably definitely get some food. So yes, I'll, I will take a break at the end of this, uh, at the end of this stream. Uh, for those, I think this is all my regulars in the chat right now. But for those that do end up watching this video and are very interested in uh, getting a part of it, take a look at the Discord link, take a look at um, my archives. And if you're very interested, it's for League of Legends and for Overwatch, just please just give it a follow. Come over to the, come over to the stream, come over to the Discord, come say hi to me. I'm very approachable. I'm looking for more VODs 24-7 to actually um, be able to do this stream almost daily. Um, I will be back with another stream tomorrow. I might come back with one tonight, depending on how I'm feeling. I hope everyone's around for it. I'll keep you posted in Discord. Come say hi. Come have a chat. I'm going to be around for the rest of the afternoon after I get some food. But yeah, love you all. Best to you.